When I was a little girl, I spent all of my time nose deep in a book. My favorite was a collection of stories about a witch named Nike. She would detail her journeys to faraway lands, and I was obsessed with her books. Uh, one day, I'm gonna travel to new places just like Nike. <laughs> Nike is a witch. That means you'd have to study magic and become one, too. So I can travel, too, if I become a witch? <laughs> yes, of course. Right? Hmm? Sure. <clears throat> but only after you're a witch and a little older. Okay, sweetie? And once I do that, do you promise you'll let me go travel the world? Yes, I promise. So study hard. Uh... I'll do it! I'll become a witch! <laughs> Not to sound full of myself, but I was a very dedicated student. I studied constantly. Rain, shine, day and night. Then one day, at the age of 14, an extraordinary girl passed the magic exams in the peaceful country of Robetta. She became the youngest apprentice witch in history. That's right. It was me. Coming. Hold on. I know you. I just passed the magic exams and I was wondering... Unfortunately, since I was the youngest to pass the exams in this country, I'd earned a bit of a reputation with the other witches. I'm way too busy! So sorry! No matter who I sought out, they all refused to take me on as an apprentice. How am I supposed to become a witch now? It's just not fair. I heard a suspicious witch has just moved into the woods. Hmm? Oh yes, I heard about that as well. I believe she's called the Stardust Witch. Oh. <sighs> I decided that I would go and meet with the Stardust Witch, and see what she was like. Since she wasn't from our country, my hope was that she wouldn't know who I was, and would be more willing to train me as her apprentice. Could that be her? Go home. Yes! <laughs> You're doing great! <laughs> yes, you are! <laughs> Lovely! <sighs> Come, my dears! <laughs> wow! Fun! <laughs> um, excuse me. Yes? Oh, hello there. Hi. You're Elena, aren't you, darling? Wait, you've heard of me? Yes. You're the girl who passed the magic exams on her first try at 14. You're quite famous, for better or worse. <sighs> Did you need something? No. Sorry to bother you. Are you leaving already? I thought you were looking for a teacher. Am I wrong about that? I'm sure you'll just say no. Are you now? Wait, what? I've got time to spare. Really? You're sure? Even though... I'm not as fragile as the witches in Robetta, dear. You see, it doesn't really matter to me what kind of girl you are. Take me on as your apprentice. Please. And that's how I met the Stardust Witch. From that day forward, Miss Fram was my teacher. Oh, good morning, Miss Fran. Oh, yes, good morning. I'm starving. Would you mind making me something for breakfast? What are you hungry for? Excellent question. A steak would be delightful. 
It seems a little heavy for breakfast. In that case, I suppose weeds will do. I think that's probably a little too light. Then how about some fresh bread? <laughs> I'm off to pick some wild veggies. Uh, um, Miss Fran, do you think you could please teach me some magic? Maybe some other time. Farewell. See you later. No matter how many days I spent in the forest with her, Miss Fran refused to teach me anything about magic. Elena, dear, I'm afraid we've run out of food. Could you make a quick trip to town? Yes. Elena, would you go catch me five or so geckos? They're for my research. Yes. Elena, dear, would you please come and make us some dinner? Yes! Painkillers. Let's see. Elena, there's a giant spider in the back. Can you please kill it? He frightened me. Yes. Ugh. Gross, it's all mixed in the soup. You don't like mushrooms? <laughs> we just should not be picky eaters. my shoulders yes uh, that feels great so I've been wondering why won't you teach me any magic oh massage harder <sighs> and just like that an entire month passed by she never taught me anything but chore since I apprenticed to her. I mean, what am I even doing here? <sighs> Miss Fran, is today the day you finally teach me about magic? Magic? No, there isn't really anything to teach you. Oh, is that so? Also, I don't feel like stew today. Would you make something else? As you wish. Well, it seems the time has finally come. Elena! Yes? I'd like for you to take a little test. What? Miss Fran, um, what exactly are you testing? How well you do in a fight against me. You're kidding. That's just a joke, right? No. Let's begin. Play. Okay, but you asked for it.
kill me. Oh, what's the matter? I must admit I expected much better from the girl who overwhelmed everyone at the magic exams. Come on, let's have some more fun. already looks like the star students nothing to write home about Working so. Uh, Stop it! It's okay. Please just let me go. Are you trying to smother me here? I'm sorry, dear. Really, I am. I guess I took things a little too far, huh? You just tried to kill me! And the worst part is, you had fun doing it! Of course, I wasn't having fun. Why would you lie like that? You never planned to make me a witch. You just like them. I hate all of you. I believed in you, enjoyed everything you put me through because I thought you were different, but you're not. You're the same as the other witches. I trusted you. You don't have any idea how hard I worked. None. All I wanted was for you to just acknowledge me. <laughs> My apology was genuine, and I knew very well how you felt. I'm proud of you for enduring it. What are you saying? Are you trying to trick me again? No. No more tricks. No more games. To be honest, I've reached my limit, too. <laughs> you should know. The only reason I did all of this was because your parents asked me to. What? I don't know what might happen if Elena keeps on like this. And I'm worried that one of these days she's going to take it too far. So, you want me to take her on as my apprentice in order to teach her about failures, setbacks, that sort of thing? We do. Mm, I don't know. Of course. We wouldn't expect you to do this for free, Miss Fran. <laughs> Money means little to me. But if it will help your daughter, how can I refuse? After giving it careful thought, I grudgingly accepted your parents' request. At first, I thought I'd put you through grueling trials so you'd learn what it meant to struggle through setbacks. Then I saw how hardworking you are. You won't balk at any task if it gets you closer to achieving your goal. On top of that, you're very talented and have no illusions as to how other people see you. I realized there was no point in elaborate trials, because you would just endure them and rise again. But... That strength may very well be your greatest weakness. You're willing to endure too much, Elena. Far too much. 
You don't have to accept everything that the world throws at you. If there's something you don't like, stand up and fight it. Sometimes you'll need to say no, and that's perfectly fine. Don't be afraid to protect yourself. <laughs> so, you haven't taught me any magic since I got here because... I was waiting for you to reach your limit. It took a whole month to get you there. The test today, that was part of it. Please believe that I'm sorry. You don't have to endure everything. It was the first time I'd ever been told that. Miss Fran, you have great skill and considerable talent. All you're lacking now is the experience to help you use them. That day, my true training began. Real lessons and new experiences. Good morning, Miss Fran. How'd you sleep? Oh, you know, I can't complain. I'm starving, though. Will you make me something for breakfast, please? Here. Already done. Oh, my. And what did I do to deserve that? I'm only doing what you told me to do. You said if there was something I didn't like, I should stand up and fight it. It turns out I don't particularly like cooking for you. I'm going to starve to death. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have some stew from yesterday. And some hard bread to go with it. That'll work, right? Sure. And so it went. Miss Fran continued to train me. Some days were easy, and some days were hard. But they were all fulfilling and so magical. become strong. Very strong. That's the first time I've ever beaten you. And that means your training's over. Huh? You've worked hard this past year and learned so much. There really isn't anything left for me to teach you. Congratulations, Elena. Welcome to the ranks of witches. As the Stardust Witch, I officially acknowledge you. Thank you so much, Miss Fran. By the way, about your title. How do you feel about the Ashen Witch? Where'd you get that idea? Your hair is the color of ash. Uh, shouldn't a title be chosen for something more important than hair color? I don't know. I thought it sounded pretty cool. Well, what about your name? Why are you called the Stardust Witch? Because it's cool, obviously. So, will you be the Ashen Witch? Yeah, sure. I guess so. All right, then. Ashen Witch Elena. <gasps> and you'll continue to do your best, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll be off now. Where to? As it turned out, there was a lot I didn't know about Miss Fran. Like the fact that she was a distinguished witch from another country. But then, why did you come here? There was someone I wanted to meet. That's the reason? And did you? Meet them, I mean. I've enjoyed my time here with you, and I wish I could stay longer. But there are many people waiting for my return back home. Goodbye, dear Elena. Let's meet again someday. Yes! I've succeeded in becoming a witch. I'm ready to leave on my journey. You don't really have to leave us right away, do you, Elena? 
You're serious about this? Absolutely. Then go. It's time. Thank you. <laughs> that said, there are three promises I insist you keep. First, if you ever feel like you are in danger, run away. Second, don't go around thinking of yourself as somebody special. Remember, you're the same as everyone else. And third, make sure you come back to us one day so you can tell us all about your adventures. Sound good? Uh huh. <laughs> Are you really leaving us? She's made her decision, dear. Let's accept it and see her off properly, okay? <laughs> if you're like this now, I worry the shock may kill you when Elena gets married. <laughs> Although there are many mages living in our world, not all of them have the same abilities. The majority of our population is made up of novices who can only perform simple magic. Next are the apprentices, and at the very top are those who have evolved into fully trained witches. You'll know the true witches by the brooches they wear. And who is this beauty with ashen hair fluttering in the wind, you might ask? She who shines so brightly with talent and splendor that even the sun is squinting involuntarily? That's right. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Land of Mages. Please come in, Madam Witch. Nice to see you. Do you not need proof of identification? No. Only mages have the ability to find us. And I can see your brooch from here, Madam Ashen Witch. That's all the proof I need. Very well, then. Thank you. As you may have deduced from the name, only mages can enter the land of mages. And since witches are the highest ranked of them all, I've heard we are especially respected here. A full-fledged witch can expect to be envied and fawned over. Perhaps it's one of the reasons I've been looking forward to visiting this country. Looks like flying is the preferred mode of transportation here. It is a very elegant city indeed. Let's see. First I'll have to find a place where I... Huh? for knocking me down. Oh, I'm so sorry! Please forgive my stupidity! Are you okay? Yes, I'm perfectly fine, thank you. But what about you? Huh? <laughs> I guess I'm doing okay, too! As you can see, I'm fit as a fiddle! Uh. Here, take this. Uh. You sure? You need to go rest and take some time to recover. I'll handle the roof tiles for you. Let me help! I insist! No, it's fine. But... I said it's fine. Okay. Uh, ow, 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 ow! Reversing spell? All fixed. <gasps> okay, now it's your turn. Uh. Wow, you made it stop bleeding. Thank you. 
Just another day in the life of a witch. Very well. No, you're leaving already? Please be more careful. And always check your surroundings when flying a broomstick. Wait, please don't go yet! Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? You're sweet, nameless mage. Take care of yourself, dear. All right, now to find a place. What's that? Oh, that looks like a splendid place to stay. What should I do if the owners insist on not requiring a payment from me? As if to say the joy of my presence was a worthy exchange. I'm sorry, but you need to leave. I'm afraid we don't have any room for you here. Really? Sorry, miss. But I am certain you can find a much more suitable place to stay at a different location. What is that supposed to mean? I just don't understand. How is that possible? So much for being fond over. I've been turned away at every place I've tried. How about over here? There doesn't seem to be any more hotels beyond this. It looks a bit run down, so maybe they won't be as particular. I hope not. You today, miss. Uh, uh. It's you! The witch! You're back for revenge, right? I, I knew it! I'm so, so sorry! Please spare my life! Torture me! I deserve it! That's not it! Let me live! <laughs> now everything below my shoulder will melt off, right? I'm so sorry! Well, no. I was just looking for somewhere to stay. Huh? I was gonna ask if you needed a hotel, and now I don't have to go and hunt you down. Will you please enter your name in the register? I'm happy I got the chance to make it up to you. For earlier, I mean. I do hope you enjoy your stay here, Miss Selena. How do you know my name? I just read it. I see, of course. And my name's Saya, if you need anything. I mean it. I am so grateful to you. That's very kind. Well, in that case, maybe you could shave a little extra off the normal witch's discount. Oh, sure! You got it! Here's your key. I'll take all your things up to your room right now. Oh no. My brooch. It's gone. But how? Where? It must have fallen off a long time ago. That's why all of the other places not only didn't fawn over me, they shoved me out the door as quickly as they possibly could. Miss Elena! <laughs> I don't see it up here either! We've looked all over town and can't find it anywhere. I'm sorry, Miss Fran. I don't know how I let that happen. How could I lose something so important? Uh, what are you doing in my room? I was waiting for you. I have a favor to ask. That's weird. I could have sworn I locked the door when I came in. Maybe. But I have all the keys since I work here, Mimbe. Hmm. That doesn't give you the right to come into my room without asking permission. I have a right to privacy, you know! You're such a meanie! Well, what was the favor you needed? Oh, right! Hmm? I know it's a lot, and you don't have to. But is there any way you could tutor me and help me pass the apprentice witch exams? First of all... Every time you drop to that pose, it confuses me. Oh, it's just a traditional way to bow in my country. It's called Dogetsa. Dogetsa, huh? Well, it is quite an interesting tradition. However, I will admit that it does at least feel sincere. All right, tell me about your situation. Thank you! Where to start? I have a little sister. She's the cute one in this picture. Huh. We're originally from a land far away to the east. We both came here together, in hopes of becoming apprentice witches. That's quite a journey. We were working here to save money, took the exam a bunch, but I haven't been able to pass. So if you haven't passed it yet, that means the two of you are still novices after all this time? Speaking of your sister, where is she right now? Is she out today? No, she actually passed the last exam. So she thought it was best to head back home before me. 
I see, so you're a bit panicked because your baby sister is ahead of you, and you figured you'd ask the first witch you met for help, right? Am I getting close at all? I guess so. I mean, I suppose you could say that, yeah. Do you happen to know when the next exam will be? It's in one week. Just one week? Well, I can at least teach you a few things until I find my brooch. Will that work? <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so, 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 so much! I really mean it! I'm eternally grateful to you and I will worship you always, but in a And that is the oddly thank endearing you, you, story you, of how I became so Saya's you. teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Teacher. It has an unexpectedly nice ring to it. There are a few steps involved in becoming an apprentice witch, the first of which is that one must pass a written exam. As much as I hate to admit it, the written exam can easily be passed with a night of cramming. The problem is the second part, the magic portion. One must keep atop their broom while using non-lethal attacks against the other examinees. The last person in the air is the one who will pass. That person then becomes an apprentice witch. To be honest, I'm glad I won't ever have to take that test again. Let me be straight with you, Saya. Judging from your current abilities, I would say you have almost no chance of passing the next round of magical exams. You could be a little less straight with me! Uh... Notice how I said almost no chance, meaning there is some chance. Huh? Wait, so you're saying that it is possible? First, we'll start with your broom writing techniques. You'll need to be able to maneuver yours as well, if not better than me. Whoa! Better than you sounds like a pretty tall order. I thought that you wanted to pass. Either you learn to do this properly, or you'll be knocked off your broom as soon as the test starts. Ugh. Next, we'll learn to turn. To do this, you want to shift your weight, then swing as nimbly as possible. Right! So next, we'll discuss how to break suddenly. After forcing the broom to a stop with your whole body, pretend you're kicking the air and shoot back up. Right! <laughs> This is how you break away in midair. Should you ever lose your broom in the middle of flying, simply use your magic to call it back to you. <clears throat> Not to worry. I'll make sure no harm comes to you, so just focus on your task. Okay. Saya seemed to be a fairly quick learner, and it didn't take her much time before she was flipping and flying through the air with ease. She's managed to impress me. I can't help but feel proud of how much she's progressed, almost like a mother teaching her baby to fly. Still, though, she's learning a little too quickly. What has she been doing with her time up until now? Great work out there today, Saya. Are you hungry at all? I am. Let's eat. Oh, it's delicious. That makes me so happy. <laughs> Ew, are you kidding? They're all mixed in the soup? Wait a sec, are you saying that you don't care for mushrooms? No, I love them. They grow on trees and they're a form of fungus. They are basically tiny gross trees themselves. And I am not the sort of person who likes eating tiny gross trees. Well then, I have news for you. Picky eaters cannot become witches. <laughs> Look, if you really want to become an apprentice witch, then you must have the ability to endure eating all kinds of food, even if it's not to your particular taste. Are you serious? Yes, quite. Furthermore, you should eat mine too as part of your training. <laughs> That's so unfair. Watch, I'm going to use wind magic to knock the fruit out of that tree. Ah. Now you give it a try. Right. When it comes to the exam, it's crucial to know how to utilize attack magic with precision. And just between you and me, using wind magic can be a slightly underhanded way. I mean, a clever trick to pass the test. You can use wind magic to shift the flow of air around the other examinees, changing how they fly their brooms. Surprisingly effective, actually. That makes sense, especially coming from you. I'm not entirely sure what you're implying, Saya, but give the wind magic another try. Right! Uh... Uh... Ah! 
To master it, you have to learn with your whole body. Um, what's that mean? Like this. Feel how gentle this is. I'm definitely feeling something. Now go ahead and try again. Uh, right! We're magic! That was even worse. <laughs> Thus, Saya's training continued. I taught her as much as I could and then used our breaks to search around town for any signs of my missing brooch. I've looked everywhere, but I can't find it. Well, now that you ask, maybe I have seen your brooch somewhere. <laughs> oh, where do you think you saw it? I just knew a lovely lady like yourself would help. You're so sweet. Unfortunately, it's hard to remember. I'm sure. If only there was some way I could jog your memory. You know, I think it's coming back to me. So this is what I saw happen the other day. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Elena. It's fine. Is something the matter? Well, I was hoping maybe I could sleep in here with you. There's not really much room. Yeah, I guess we are kind of a cheap hotel. I think you misunderstood me. It's fine, if that's what you really want. <gasps> Thank you! I was thinking, you've improved quite a lot lately. At the rate you're going, it doesn't seem like you'll need my help for much longer. Nah, -uh. that's not true, Miss Elena. You know firsthand how clumsy I can be, and there are still so many things about magic that I'd like for you to teach me. I'm a traveler, Saya, and soon it will be time for me to leave this country. Yeah, but until that time comes, you and I can stay together, right? I want to learn. So please teach me everything you know, until you find your brooch. You and I both know you're asking too much of me. Huh? Don't play dumb. It's time to give it back, Saya. Uh. Uh. You improved way too fast. Uh. At first, I thought it was because I was good at teaching. But that wasn't the case. You were able to ride a broom properly from the start. You said yourself you come from a faraway land. If you were really that poor of a flyer, then how did you even get here? So when the woman I spoke to told me what she saw, it all came together. You planned this. Right. treat people like this. You can't tie someone down using misguided methods. I was really lonely. I know, but I'm not a replacement for your little sister. I know that, but I still wanted to be together with someone. I just hated being alone so much. I was scared. And that's why I decided... Ouchie! What the heck was that for? Being lonely is not a good excuse. When you are truly serious about accomplishing something, you're always going to be by yourself. Being alone is just part of the process. This isn't the time for friends. Listen, I know how hard it is to fight alone. It is scary. I understand because I've been there myself. So take this. No, it's your hat. Huh? Now you'll be fine even if you're alone. Because with this hat, you'll always have a part of me that's fighting by your side. But then you'll be hatless. Oh, don't worry about me. <gasps> that's actually a spare one. And this way, you and I can match. After I leave here, you'll be by yourself again. But you'll never be alone. <gasps> because you have people like me and your sister. Believe it or not, We'll be watching over you. <laughs> I'll pay for your hotel stay out of my own wages. If I don't have enough, I'll pay in installments. <laughs> In 
And so, we spent our last night together. I comforted her as much as I could, and taught her ways to make it through the magic exams. She told me about her little sister, and I told her all about my journey so far. Lying there, Saya looked so fragile and helpless. It's strange. But deep down, she reminded me a lot of my past self. Six months have passed since that day. I've continued my journey, and I'm now visiting a country far from the land of mages. Oh, they released the latest magic exam results. The article that I read revisited a young girl's days of anguish, but also all of her hopes for the future. It mentioned her sister, her run-in with a traveler, how a hat gave her the courage to keep fighting alone, and finally become an apprentice witch. It said, when I become a full witch, I'm going to go see the traveler that I love. <laughs> I'm waiting patiently for you. One day we will meet again. I should have flown over the forest instead of through. Too late for that. I'll just have to keep going and hope for the best. Some say that just as the rose is protected by thorns, when you step too close to a thing of beauty, occasionally she may show you her fangs. And speaking of lovely things, who is this beauty soaring through the sky, blossoming as brightly as the most colorful field of flowers? That's right. I don't think I've seen a field this exquisite before. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, hello there. Are you the one in charge of tending to these flowers? I don't know that anyone's actually responsible for them. I just come here because I enjoy being around them so much. I love to smell the flowers while basking in the sunshine. It's amazing how many different kinds there are, especially if nobody's cultivating them. I can see why you like it here. Hmm. Your lovely brooch means you're a witch, am I right? If so, may I ask for a favor of you? Of course, I'll do whatever I can. <laughs> Would you mind taking this bouquet with you to the country you were about to enter? I don't mind delivering it for you, but who am I supposed to give it to? Anyone you want. What's important is that someone sees how beautiful these flowers are. I believe I understand. You want me to advertise this flower field for you? Or am I mistaken? Is that all right? Oh yes, I'd be happy to. Blessings and safe travels to you. These are so lovely. I'm off to share the joy. <clears throat> Farewell! Where do you think you're going? Excuse you. Hey! Stop! I told you to stop! What business do you have with me? Are you a traveler? As if you can't tell by looking. <laughs> What's with that bouquet of flowers? Certainly nothing that concerns you. I want to see it. Hey, wait! But how? Where did you get this? It's none of your concern, and I don't appreciate your interrogation. Now give it back to me! Hey, what's going on here? I'll take care of this. You go take a break, son. Sir, look at these flowers closely and the shawl they're wrapped in. Don't you think they look like... I said take a break! Did you not hear me? You need to get some rest. Wait, give me back my bouquet. Here. Thank you. Please excuse him, miss. He's not usually like this. His sister recently went missing, and he's been quick to anger ever since. It didn't bother me. Not much, anyway. 
<laughs> well, regardless, please allow me to properly dispose of the flowers. I apologize profusely, but they're actually not permitted in our country. Why? What do you mean? Those flowers are poisonous. Poisonous? But how? Nothing happened to me. Of course not. You're a witch. But there is magic in them that will make people who can't use magic lose their minds. And you're certain it's because of these flowers? Oh, yes. The instant people see them, they are mesmerized, almost seduced, and can't stop staring. They head to where they bloom, and then themselves become nutrients for the plants. I see. I understand now why you'd want to dispose of them. Is there something wrong? No. I'm very sorry. You're free to go. Fascinating stories in the adventures of Nikkei. That field of poisonous flowers reminded me of one about a strange plant. Normally, plants release magic for us after absorbing sunlight. But in that story, a sudden mutation caused the plant to start sucking magic from those around it. It became sentient and started behaving violently toward people. Could it be? Before making my way toward the next country, I decided to return to the flower field. There was something I wanted to check. You're the guard from the gate, right? Hi. Thank you for yesterday. I heard about your sister. I finally found her. I don't know if I ever would have if you hadn't brought that bouquet and her shawl. That's how I knew she was here. I finally found her. <gasps> You've become so beautiful. It's not fair to keep such a wonderful place like this to yourself. Come on, sis. Let's introduce this place to everyone from back home. I know they'll love it. Besides, I want to show you off now that you've become as gorgeous as a flower. Would that be okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can't believe how beautiful you are now. Oh, wow, you're a real witch. That's amazing. <laughs> well, then what brings you out here? I'm a traveler. This is a stop on my journey. And you? I'm out here on a quest for happiness. I see. What's that? <laughs> it's a bottle I use to capture happiness. But how do you capture it? When I see people or even animals feeling joyful, I turn that joy into magic. And then I store it all in this bottle. So that means you're trained in the art of using magic, too. And you're converting feelings into something that can be stored. Yeah, that's more or less it. May I look inside? Uh, no way! If you were to open it up right here, then all of my hard work would slip right out. I've been gathering these precious treasures for a very long time to give them to a girl I like. <sighs> what? 
Is that bad? No, I, I'm a bit moved by your words. It reminded me of a book I read in the past. Oh? Yes. For the sake of his wife who is sick and homebound, a husband travels around the world, documenting beautiful views with magic, so that he can bring them home for his wife to experience. Whoa. What a great idea! Did his wife enjoy it as much as he hoped she would? I, um... I can't remember the end. I bet she healed and lived a long, healthy life. Maybe that's what happened. So, tell me a little bit about this girl you like. Well, uh, she's a servant named Nino who does housework for my family. But every day when I see her, she looks a little unhappy, so I wanted to cheer her up. I think there's enough in here to make her smile. At least I hope. Yes, let's hope. So, you were testing the feelings of plants? Yep. I wanted to see if I could get any happiness out of them, but I failed. Well, lucky that the plants didn't try to eat you. Huh? Oh, it's nothing. Look! You can see it up ahead! <sighs> What a beautiful little village. I agree. I take it that's the village chief's house? You could say it's my house, too. Oh. I expected a bigger reaction than that. Sorry, did you want me to act more impressed? Oh, wow! You look so amazing! Uh, on second thought, it's fine. So, when are you going to give Nina the bottle? Uh... I was planning on doing it right after we all eat lunch. Oh, hey, I know. Why don't you join us, too? Trust me when I say that Nino's cooking is the best in town. I certainly appreciate the invitation, but I actually just had some breakfast not that long ago. We'll just make you a small plate, then. Are there any foods you don't like or can't eat? I don't care much for mushrooms. Okay, then. I'll be sure to let her know. And please make sure it's a small portion. No problem. We'll make you something delicious. Well, Nino will. Welcome. Make yourself at home. Thank you. <gasps> um, oh, hello, miss. <laughs> yes, hello. If I may ask, mm. could you be from a land in the Far East? Uh, who? Me? Yes, I'm sorry. It's just, you remind me of someone I know. How'd you guess? It's true. As it just so happens, my father found her in a land towards the east. Found her? I see. And now you're here. Uh, yes. I'm quite fortunate. Because the village chief is so kind to me. I haven't actually had the pleasure of meeting the village chief as of yet. Oh, it's because he's busy. Anyway, Nino. What are we having for lunch today? Sorry, the village chief requested fish, so grilled fish with a little salt. Since we have a guest, can you whip up an extra portion? Mm -hmm. You'll stay, right? Yes, and thanks for having me. I only need a small amount of food, though. Yes, of course. Hold on a second, Nino. After we're finished with lunch, I'd like to give you a present. Uh, wait, a present for me? Yep. You're going to love it. Please, that's really not necessary. And it might make the village chief very angry with me. Nah, don't worry. Everything will be just fine as long as I talk to Father. But I'm afraid. Fine. Then I'll make it a direct order. You will accept my presence, understood? That way it's my fault. In that case, yes, sir. Yay! I can help you with preparing lunch. Don't be ridiculous, Miss Witch. You're our guest. We'll handle the food. What's this? It's not often we have guests. Hello there. Are you the village chief? Indeed. I'm a traveling witch. My name is Elena. Nice to meet you. My, my, what a polite young lady. Please, make yourself at home.
food's ready. Um, sorry for the wait. Uh, this is small. Is there a problem? No, nothing at all. Thanks so much for the meal. All right, let's eat. Thank you for lunch. Everything was delicious. Uh, oh, that's good. I'm glad. Please allow me to clear the table. I'll help you. No, we got it. So, you met Nino in a land to the east? Hmm. I purchased her. Purchased? Yeah, she's a slave. You see, my wife left us a few years back. As such, we struggled with the housework a bit. I was visiting an eastern land for work around the time, and then I found her. She was expensive, but quite good at housework. And I imagine that as she grows older, Nino will turn into a beautiful woman. Purchasing her was an easy decision, and she's turned into such a wonderful servant. And does Emil know that you actually purchased Nino? Yes, he knows the story. But Emil has never been the sort of boy to care about whether a person is a slave or not. Hey, Nino, where should I put the big clip? <laughs> Why can't you watch what you're doing, Wentz? You really are worthless! How stupid do you have to be to screw up something so simple? Hurry and clean it up or else! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! Quit groveling! Hey, stop yelling! I'm the one who scared her, so it's my fault! You stay out of this, Emil! I said clean! Yes, sir! There's no reason for you to clean it up. Careful not to drop it, okay? Oh my! Thank you so much. I'm sorry you had to see our disgraceful behavior, but I appreciate you fixing our porcelain. Go on, don't you want to thank our guest? Um, I'm terribly sorry. You don't need to apologize. Just say thank you. Thank you, Miss Witch. Of course. I could have fixed the china, too. With magic. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't realize my help was unwelcome. No, I am grateful. It was my pleasure. Still, I know I could have done it, too. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, I bet Nino is feeling pretty downright about now. <laughs> if only you had something that could make her happy. That's a great idea, Miss Witch! You might be a genius! <laughs> Agreed, but feel free to praise me even more. Remember earlier when I said that I had a present for you? Um, yes. Well, prepare to be amazed. You see, it's a bottle filled with happiness. That's happiness? Yes, I used my magic to capture the happiness of various people I found. Other people's happiness? Using magic? You'll only get to see it once, so look carefully, okay? Right, are you ready? Let's go! <gasps> All of these are little pieces of happiness. I 
did this for you, so you can see all the joy in the outside world. Please, Nina, don't look so sad. I promise that I'll make you happy. Be happy? That's possible? visit again. And when you come back, Nino and I are going to make you a meal that's even more delicious than today's was, right? Yes, that sounds lovely. Bye! Take care! Ben brought the gorgeous scenery back home to his wife, but since she couldn't go herself, it ended up only deepening her depression. Until one day. Beware seemingly selfless deeds, lest you do more harm than good in the end. That's how it ended. It was a rather preachy message, so I thought. But now I realize that kindness and beauty can oftentimes be unintended weapons. I don't know what happened to Nino after. This is a story about love. About a princess who lost her heart. She fell in love with the castle cook, who some would say was beneath her, though their respective classes mattered little to them. Why do we describe it that way? Falling in love? Is it because one tumbles into it suddenly and unexpectedly, like a pitfall trap? I wouldn't know. They nurtured their love secretly, and in time, the princess became pregnant. Yes, it was the fruit of their love, so to speak. There was a battle or something. Surely I would have heard about it. I can't see a single living person anywhere. What am I going to do now? Even if I left and headed to another town, I won't arrive until the middle of the night, but if I stay, then I'll freeze to death for sure. It looks like there's one building still standing. That's my best hope. Forgive me. Who are you? I 
alive again. Hmm. I imagine it's quite chilly out, isn't it? Yes, it is. I must say, I was surprised to find this place inhabited, given the state of the town. For my part, I was surprised to find that I had a visitor. Do you mind if I ask where you came from? A land far away from here. I'm a traveler making a journey, and I've come a great distance. May I ask your name? Yes, it's Elena. And I'm Mira Rose. It's a pleasure. If I may ask, what was it that decimated the entire town? I'm afraid I don't know. How is that possible? It may sound absurd, but it's true. I haven't a single memory of what happened or of how I survived it. I simply woke one day in this castle surrounded by destruction. So you're suffering from amnesia? It would seem so. And yet somehow you can still remember your own name? You have forgotten, but your name is Princess Mira Rose. So you're a princess then. You are living in lavish rooms inside a castle, so I suppose it makes sense. Oh, yes. You're probably wondering why you're here, what became of this land and all its people, why it is you remember nothing. Allow me to explain a little about your situation. Heed these words or you will die. Well, they seem pretty self-important. It looks like the sun has set. Um, it goes on to say, before I tell you more, I would like for you to wait until nightfall and then look out the window. Out the window? <laughs> Tell you. That monster is responsible for this entire kingdom's destruction, and also for the loss of your memory. Javalier is the beast's name. So that's it. Javalier. The letter goes on to describe it in further detail. Awakening as the sun sets, wreaking havoc until it rises again. Javalier's goal is to annihilate every single inhabitant of this land. It rages on, searching for the last living soul, searching for you. And so it seems Javalier will not rest until I am dead. You risk your life by staying here, so why wouldn't you just run? According to the letter, Javalier cannot enter the castle, and I'm safe as long as I'm inside. Are you sure? Yes. It reads. Javalier seeks to slay she who has become a princess without subjects. Running will do no good. The monster will chase until you are caught and killed. Finally, it says, I close this by asking you to defeat Javalier. It should be a simple enough task for a witch. Use your power to kill the ruthless demon. End this once and for all. If not for your own sake, then for the sake of those who have already suffered and perished. And there you have it. Huh. Interesting, Mira Rose. It seems that you're a witch. And it seems, Elena, that you are one too. Yes, though I think that should have been obvious from the very beginning. I am wearing my brooch. I'm just teasing. <laughs> that letter leaves so many important questions unanswered, though. Why did Javelier appear in the first place? Why were you the only survivor? How did you lose your memory? There are a lot of blanks. You're right. But the path forward is clear. I was once a princess of the kingdom destroyed by that beast. Therefore, I have a solemn duty to see it defeated for good. Wouldn't you agree? How many nights has it been now that you've looked out and seen it? This makes seven. And have you fought it? Not yet. But I will. Tomorrow night. Do you have any chance of winning? Of course I do. You seem quite confident. It's been one week since I first awoke. At least I've remembered how to use magic, if nothing else. I have a sneaking suspicion that I was quite an accomplished witch prior to my sudden memory loss. I feel my magic's been recharged. Do your best. I'll be there, cheering you on from a safe distance. 
What's this? You mean you don't plan to help me? No, because I don't stand to gain anything by helping you. You may not be altruistic, but you are honest. I can respect that. That's good, thank you. Mira Rose allowed me to stay the night, showing me to a spare room that had once been used by one of the castle's servants. Now then. <laughs> this bed is so soft and fluffy! I haven't been this comfortable in forever! Smells good. Good morning, Mira Rose. Morning. The bread's just finished baking. Oh, yeah? But who baked it? Me. Wait, you know how to bake? It appears so. But you're a princess. Yes, I suppose that does sound strange. I don't know why, but my body seems to remember how to cook just fine. Anyway, let's have breakfast while it's still warm. Oh, looks delicious. So good. I'm glad to hear it. May we chat while we eat breakfast? I'd like to strategize for tonight. You're going to try and defeat Javelier, right? Yes, and I was hoping you might help me to prepare. Well, you gave me a warm bed for the night and then fed me. Helping you prep is the least I can do. Then I don't suppose you'd help me fight him, would you? That one's still a no. Oh. Worth a try. I don't understand. If the palace is safe like the letter said, then don't you also have the choice of not fighting? That is, if you believe the letter to be completely credible. I don't believe the letter to be fake. The resentment for Javelier feels far too palpable. How strange, and why do you think that is? Oh. I can feel it. The author's hate for Javelier. It's so authentic. I can't possibly doubt it. And for some reason, I share those feelings. Well, think you'll finish by nightfall? Maybe, but it all depends on your definition of finish. As it stands now, you look to be a little over halfway done. Just half. Mira Rose's plan was to trick Javelier into chasing her into a pitfall trap. Once in the hole, it would be unable to escape her relentless magical attacks. It's basic, but even if it just prevents a counterattack, it could still be quite effective. The flaw in this plan is that the preparations are a huge pain. This is nothing, for I am the Ashen Michelina! Tis a trifle! Thank you for your help. It's almost time. Let's meet up again later, and I'll be sure to treat you to a delicious dinner. I don't think that's a good idea. It'll be a lot of effort for you to cook after finishing such an enormous task, so I'll cook instead, okay? So don't you dare die. It'll be fine. Death's not part of the plan. Now, you should go. Until later. just met her yesterday, I couldn't help but feel like I really wanted Mirabos to live. And that's why... 
I will fight if I have to, from a safe distance, of course. That's it! Follow me! Finally understand all of my despair. Farewell, dear father. I got my memories back. All of them! I remember! <laughs> Farewell.
Mira Rose finally confessed to the king, her father, about how she'd become pregnant with the cook's child. Without hesitation, he decreed, the servant will be executed. No one could appease the king's wrath, and the cook was subjected to cruel torture. He was burned to death in front of her very eyes. He killed my child. It was that day I swore that I would kill everything else. First, I had to make the castle a safe place. I put up a barrier that would only allow mages to enter. I see. And that's why Javelier couldn't get into the castle. Right after that, I left a letter for myself, and then I cursed my father, turning him into a monster. The spell was so powerful it would cost me my memories. It was your father. He destroyed this entire country, and its people. That's right. He ate his beloved subjects. And he did it while still aware that he was the king. That monster ate the subjects whether he wished to or not. <laughs> that should have made him understand how it felt. To have the things dear to you, the things you love, snatched away. Now he knows my pain. <laughs> Okay, the bread's done baking. Who's ready for breakfast? Dig in while it's still hot. Well then, is it good? Really, I'm so glad. It doesn't even come close to comparing to the bread you bake, though. <laughs> Do you want some more? Oh, look, you've got jam on your cheek. You're such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Her love story had finally come to a close, but with an ending that Mira Rose had personally devised, and by her own hand, she became the princess of a inside the book looks just like the Fran I know. Could it be the same person? Looking at that book brought back fond memories for me of a country I'd visited six months earlier and the people I encountered there. It was a large country, full of mages and far away from here. A land known as Royal Celestia. me to go in there. Probably not, but maybe? I'll be careful. <laughs> Excuse me. Trespassers are not tolerated here. <gasps> You're a witch? I hope you can forgive me, madam. Really, I didn't mean to be so rude. Oh, it's okay. I'll just be on my way now. No one is allowed inside without permission. And there's no exception for witches? I'm sorry, but no. 
least he could have done was let me look around a bit. <sighs> well, anyway, I need to find a place to stay. Coming through! Lena. We're all students at the Academy. The Royal Magic Academy, I mean. Are you talking about the school I visited earlier? What could you want with me? Well, you see, we were wondering, could you come with us, please? And could you not ask us any questions on the way? Why would I do that? Uh, I just asked you not to ask any questions. What? <laughs> not happening. Will you at least tell us why not? It doesn't interest me. Please move. I can understand why you might hesitate, of course, but you have my word that you can trust me. Now, shall we go? <laughs> no, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey guys, looks like this one's gonna take a little bit of teamwork. I'm not so sure. I bet I could catch her on my own. You wanna catch me? Why would you? No way! You can't have all the glory! That's what you think! I have no idea what is going on here, but... <gasps> hey! Come back here! Oh no, she's getting away! I just hope she doesn't make it too far! You guys head on out toward the river. The rest of you split off and go circle around the state guest house. Haha! <laughs> 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 Fancy seeing you here, Madam Witch! Now come along and don't make a fuss. I'm quick, but they do know the lay of the land better than me. <laughs> Stubborn group, aren't they? But I can respect their determination. Oh, very well. Then in that case, may as well have a bit of fun. Rich, that is it. I can't take anymore. I can't either. It doesn't matter how big of a group you people have, you won't catch me. I do hope you realize that by now. Just give up already. Farewell. That's it for today. Good work, everyone. <laughs> um, thank you, ma'am. <sighs> what did we learn? None of you stands a chance against her. Yeah, that's true. And that age has nothing to do with it. You've just learned the difference between you and a full-fledged witch. It's been quite a long time, hasn't it, Elena? I can't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I hadn't seen my teacher Miss Fran in several years. And there she was. That's it for today's extracurricular lesson. I'll look forward to reading your reports tomorrow. Okay. Thank you for the great experience. Uh, My goodness. The poor things are all exhausted. Maybe you went a little bit too far? Wait, you're blaming this on me? I suppose it was partially my fault as well. I think it's more than partially. As their main instructor, you're in charge of them, right? Indeed. The king requested that I take up the post. Anyway, we'll have time to chat about that later. Let's go inside, Elena. For their lesson today, I instructed them to bring you to me. I knew they'd have a difficult time, so I told them they could use force if necessary. I see. Though I'm curious as to how you discovered I was in town. You tried to enter earlier, didn't you? I caught someone trespassing here earlier. A young witch with ashen hair. I'm worried that she's possibly a spy from another country. Me? A spy? That's a little on the extreme side, isn't it? I knew right away that it had to be you. And I simply couldn't help myself. I had to see you, so I asked my students to go and retrieve you for me. This country's so big, and I couldn't hope to find you all by myself. Besides, it's great training for them. They got to go up against a talented witch. That's not a common opportunity. Uh, you really think I'm talented? That means a lot coming from you. They know how rare this was. 
I think the challenge of chasing you down made their day, and seeing them smile made me happy as well. <laughs> You've traveled quite a few places now, haven't you? Yes, but I'm curious how you knew that. We haven't spoken for quite some time. Of course. I heard it from your mother. Uh, you've seen her? She said she's very worried about you, and that if you're ever near your hometown, she would love it if you would visit. I'm planning on it. Good. Elena. Yeah? I'm curious what made you want to become a traveler. I'm guessing it was because of your mother? My mother? Why? Oh dear, does that mean I'm wrong? Actually, I was inspired to become one because of a book I read when I was younger called The Adventures of Nikkei. What a coincidence! I'm a fan of that book as well. My favorite story is the last one titled Fula the Apprentice Witch. Well, that one is my favorite too. In it, the protagonist Nikkei takes on an apprentice witch named Fula, determined to help her grow into her full power. In the end, Nikkei moves to the countryside to live as an ordinary woman. Fula becomes a new traveler, and Nikkei bids farewell to her life of adventure. That sure takes me back. Hmm? Oh, I mean, to reading this book. Can I tell you a secret? Uh, I, um... I was so inspired by the adventures of Nikkei that I wrote a novel about my travels as well. Oh, how fascinating. I'm sorry, am I boring you? No, not at all. I was just thinking about something else. Please continue. After I'd written about a hundred pages of the manuscript, I went back and read it. It was so bad I collapsed to the floor writhing in embarrassment. Wow. I stuffed it in my travel bag and forgot about it. Which would have been no problem except that one day I was visiting a certain country and decided to sell my bag. Uh, I hadn't known it, but apparently the bag belonged to a legendary traveler. A legendary traveler, huh? Which is odd, because I just bought it in a pawn shop. And let me guess, when you sold it, you left your manuscript inside. How'd you figure that out? You didn't leave very much to the imagination. I remember the whole incident from time to time and feel positively humiliated. What if someone found the manuscript and read it? Can you imagine? <laughs> Miss Fran. Oh, well, as embarrassing as it is, at least I can laugh about it now. So, was there a point I was supposed to get from that story? I'm surprised it isn't obvious. <laughs> You'll have many unpredictable adventures as you continue on your journey. And someday, you'll have just as many stories as Nikkei did. So I want you to promise that you'll come and tell me them all. Can you do that for me? Yes, I think I can. And be sure to write in your diary. Did my mom tell you I have a diary? She's looking forward to reading it. And so am I. Very much. Then I'll make sure to write a lot so I don't let you down. Everyone? I believe you met her yesterday, but let me introduce her again. This young lady here is the Ashen Witch Elena. Uh, nice to meet you all. She's going to be a special guest lecturer for our lesson today. Do you have any questions to ask her? I do! Go on. Hello there. You seeing anybody? I'm unattached. I travel far too much. Can we keep it to questions about magic, please? Anyone else? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Over here. Well, um, what kind of stuff are you good at? Like, magic-wise? I'm good at pretty much everything. From attacks all the way to transforming. I have a pretty good handle on all kinds of magic. Right. Thank you so much. Of all the countries you've visited so far, which one of them would you say is your favorite? Probably this country. <laughs> yes, Miss Fran? You're trying to flatter us, aren't you? No, I'm perfectly serious. Where did you come from originally? The peaceful country of Robetta. Is it fun being a traveler? Yes, extremely. My turn! What about your panties? What co- Come on. <laughs> For the rest of the day, I instructed the students alongside Miss Fran. The flow of your magic is going wild, so you need to try and calm your mind more in order to stabilize your magic. Right. Excuse me, this isn't a game, so stop making water swords. Miss Elena? Yes? I can't get my water to form into a proper sphere. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. 
Oh, the problem here is an excess of power. You might try relaxing your magic a bit. Right. Just relax it, okay. <laughs> Maybe not quite that much. <laughs> uh, miss, I have something I'd like you to help me out with, too. Yes, what is it? Well, I'm terrible at manipulating water. Like, I can barely lift it up at all. Can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. Could you give me a little demonstration? Huh? I can do that. You weren't kidding. Will you tell me where I'm messing up? It looks like you haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet. For you, maybe we should just focus on getting the water out of the bucket first. Oh, okay. <sighs> Once you get the water out, return it to the bucket, and then pull it out again. Does that make sense? <sighs> yes, I think so. Progress, not perfection. <sighs> Keep at it and you'll be better in no time. Uh, right! Thanks so much for your help, ma'am! Of course! Excuse me, Miss Elena! <sighs> Check this spell out. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Oh, ah! It's so cold. I wouldn't consider myself a teacher per se, especially to kids close to my own age. But when it was all said and done, I found that I actually enjoyed the experience. <laughs> this is my favorite spot in the entire city. It's something I wanted to show you before you left to resume your travels. I simply adore this view. I can see why. It's lovely. You're still leaving tomorrow morning, right? Yes. On to the next country. That's too bad. Not surprisingly, it seems my students have taken quite a liking to you. I'm sure they'll be sad. Aw, I guess it is unusual to see such a young witch. It is. I wish you could stay a bit longer. You know, I've been wondering, what will the students at the academy do once they graduate? Go to find work, I would imagine. They go to work? That's right. Perhaps they could deliver packages? Or fly people around? Who knows? Are the street performers who use magic also graduates at the academy? Are they getting paid for their work? Well, I don't know how much they get paid per se, but yes, they do get paid. Still, though... They're not off showcasing their magic every day simply because they want some money. Then what is their reason? It's what they like to do. <sighs> Think about yourself. You travel because you like it, right? And it's the same for these people. They use their magic like this because they love to make other people happy. I think I understand. I often thought about what a wonderful country this was. The beautiful streets, the smiling people. The sight of them moved me. Royal Celestria called to me, perhaps because in its own way, it reflected many of the joys I'd experienced on my journey so far. So, Elena, what are some other things you like? Uh, you mean besides traveling? That's a tough one. Then you'll have to think hard. Mm, well, books are nice. Oh, anything else? Are you going to tell me why you're asking? No reason. I was just wondering. Oh, I know. You're going to give me a parting gift, right? Yes, maybe. Uh, that's sweet, but I really don't think it's all that necessary. That's for me to decide. So would you say that you like flowers? Sounds like a leading question to me. Perhaps. Do you? Oh, or maybe you prefer butterflies instead? You're the one who likes butterflies, Miss Fran. Wait, you don't like butterflies? Very odd. That uh, they're okay. Ah, I see. Butterflies are just okay. But flowers, though? They're good? You're not going to give up, are you? What's your answer? Sure, I like flowers. Excellent. I'm glad we established that. 
Well, then let's meet at the gate tomorrow, shall we? She's not here. Based on our conversation, I was positive that Miss Fran was going to show up with a bouquet of flowers or something. Which would make me happy, but I knew they wouldn't last very long. If I saw the same flowers in another country, they would remind me of her. I would think of her in the time I spent at the Academy, and I knew it'd make me sad. I decided to leave on my journey without waiting for Miss Fran. At least that way, I wouldn't have to worry about any flowers or sad feelings to come. Well, Miss Fran, I'll see you around. A flower. <sighs> Elena. You were the one who chose the life of a traveler, so of course I would never dream of trying to stop you. But I can do this much for you. I hope you enjoy it. Miss Fran, just tell me, do they make you happy? <laughs> yes, extremely. I want you to know that my students and I are all cheering for you from the bottom of our hearts. Carry that knowledge with you always. Thanks, everyone. I promise I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Miss Elena. Bye! We'd love for you to come back and see us! I'll be patiently waiting for you. Yeah, we'll all be waiting. I know we'll meet again someday. But until then, take care, Elena. <laughs> I will. And there on the horizon, a young witch soared over the grasslands. A beautiful smile gracing her features, she asked herself, What country will I encounter next? What sort of interesting people will I meet? Whatever the case, her heart was filled with hope. Who is this beautiful traveler? That's right, it's me. <sighs> Isn't that a little too extravagant, even for a statue? It looks like the next time I see Miss Fran, I'll at least have a pretty interesting story to tell her. The Land of Truth Tellers? But the map says this is... Yes, the name changed about six months back. As the new name suggests, we have become a country with no liars. Huh. Once you cross this threshold, you will no longer be able to lie, even if you're a witch. How in the world did you find yourselves in this situation? Well, it's all to do with the mysterious magical power of the king's sword, you see. Sword? That sword is brimming with magic. He used it to place a barrier around the entire country that prohibits those within from lying. That sounds kind of shady if you ask me. Look at you! You're already starting to be honest of your own accord. And frankly, I'm inclined to agree with you, miss. So, what would you like to do next? Will you stay and visit? Let me think. On one hand, the whole thing is highly suspicious. But on the other, I suppose it could make a good story. So it couldn't hurt to take a quick look. You are an honest one. Step this way into the land of truth tellers, miss. Well For a country ruled by such powerful magic, it looks kind of boring. Not really what I pictured. Well, I suppose I could put the king's barrier to the test. I'll try saying I am not beautiful and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Regrettably, I am not a beautiful... I'm not... I'm... I am an unbelievably beautiful witch! Oh, how about that? My mouth corrected me all on its own. For some reason, I didn't believe them when they said that the rule even applied to witches. As long as we're being honest, though, it's a little too quiet for my liking. <laughs> Weird. I wonder why no one's talking. Those look good. 
Excuse me, are these freshly baked? Mm-hmm. Perfect, I'll take one then. Ugh, are you kidding? It's just so hard and dry, it's practically stale. It's probably unsold bread from yesterday. But she made it sound like these were fresh. Some honest country this is turning out to be. When they told me no one here could lie anymore, I assumed that meant the people would be more pure somehow. Unfortunately, I guess I was wrong. Instead, everybody seems so distant and cold, and every interaction is just so strained. I wonder what made the king decide to control his subjects like this. And if it was worth it. <laughs> You're the witch dispatched from the United Magic Association, right? No, I'm sorry. You're looking for someone else. <gasps> for the unaware, the United Magic Association is an organization that sends representatives to settle magical disputes around the world. Association witches have an extra brooch. It's the easiest way to pick them out. They're shaped like a moon. Sorry. <gasps> Well, that was a bit odd. If this enchantment is really as strong as it appears to be, then I wonder if it applies to written text as well. New sweets available. Actually, we just added some new ingredients to old products. Okay. A mystery woven by a brand new author. Our local critics were stunned by how dreadfully boring it turned out to be. I see. Hmm. I'll try it myself. Let me see. I'll write something like, I have a twisted personality, and see if it changes. Fascinating. It's still shady, but I can't deny the spell is incredible. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> You're so stubborn it makes me sick! Sorry, come again? I'd watch my mouth if I were you! <gasps> you steamy bastard, I wish you'd die already! If one of us is gonna die, then it should be you! Please, oh, I'm not an idiot who would have finally hear some totally voices and it turns lead. out to be whatever this is. <laughs> um, shouldn't someone try to stop them? Uh, it's fine, they helped the rest of us blow off some steam. I actually wish they'd fight more often. Huh, <sighs> that's one way of looking at it. Why is everyone in this country so reluctant to speak out loud? Come on, you have to know by now that it's impossible to lie here. So if we try to talk to each other, we just end up fighting like they are. For a witch, you sure are stupid. <laughs> There, you see, we used to be peaceful. All this is the fault of our idiot king. Oh, uh, whoops. That's enough, people! I'm ordering you to stop! Can we please refrain from having all our brawls in broad daylight, if you don't mind? Why didn't any of you stop them? certainly been a long time, hasn't it? I'm glad that you seem to be doing well. Yes, thanks to this hat. And this! My most prized possession! I'm doing extremely well! Hey, isn't that mine? And I even became a full-fledged witch! Yes, I can see that. Congratulations! So, tell me, what title did you take? I'm the Charcoal Witch! Charcoal Witch, huh? That sounds oddly close to my Ashen Witch title, don't you think? You bet it does! And that's no coincidence, by the way, because I specifically requested that my teacher choose a word close to Ashen! Hmm, <laughs> of course you did. So, I take it you're part of the United Magic Association, right? Yeah, I wanted to travel around like you do and still make some money, so I figured the association was the easiest way to do it. In fact, I came here on official business. Makes sense. Yep. I bought something expensive recently that I couldn't really afford, so I need to pull some extra hours. Now that you mention it, I met someone earlier today who was looking for a witch from the association. Great! Can you tell me who it was? Unfortunately, I couldn't find a name or address anywhere in the request I received. Back again, you incompetent waste of magic! Get out of my sight right now! I'm not reading that! 
please don't tell me it's the weirdo the over there. The it's it's the weirdo over him. there. In any case, do you maybe want to let go of me? No, I'm alright just like this. <sighs> Excuse us. You've been looking for a witch dispatched by the association, have you not? <sighs> Wonderful, then please allow me to introduce you to my friend, Saya. Come on, friend is a little too formal, don't you think? Well, hello there, friend. <sighs> I'm Ahemia. Sorry I completely forgot to write my name and address in the letter I sent to you. <clears throat> uh... Please, Miss Ahemia, tell us why it is you have a notepad. Is it that you can't talk to us, or that you won't talk to us? <clears throat> it's kind of a lengthy story, but I lost my voice. Don't tell me you're gonna write down the entire story. Oh boy, this is gonna take a long time, isn't it? Saya, be nice. And so the poor voiceless witch told us her tale of woe, or rather, she scribbled it. From what we could understand, about six months ago, while Ahemia was still employed at the palace, she received a request from the king. Heed my words, quicksand witch Ahemia, and use whatever power you see fit to rid my country of all its liars. <gasps> My retainers have rarely been truthful with me. From this day forward, I wish to be surrounded only by those who are completely honest. I don't even know where to begin. But if I can figure out some way to do what he asks, then maybe we could... I can dream, right? <gasps> Wait a second. I can just put up a barrier that won't let anyone lie. That's it! Ahemia found a sword in the castle that she thought would make a suitable vessel for the amount of magic that such a barrier would require. <laughs> All right then. Yane Sanaha. Yane Sanaha. Mina no Motera! But she underestimated the amount of power she would need to cast a spell of this magnitude. She poured in everything she had. It still wasn't enough. And in a last-ditch effort to complete the barrier, she even gave up her voice. Yes, in hindsight, I could have seen that coming. Why do desperate people always give up their voices or memories? Never mind, I'm just talking to myself. Oh, an intriguing solution. As long as I possess this magic sword, I can activate a barrier around my entire country. That will prevent all lying? <gasps> A land full of nothing but truth-tellers. It's perfect. <laughs> but I have to say, this sword is really lame. <gasps> it's so gaudy. I know it's necessary, but I hate that I have to hold on to something this tacky. And so... That's how the Land of Truth-Tellers was born. Of course, since Ahemia could no longer use magic after gifting the king his new sword, she ultimately ended up getting kicked out of the palace. <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, you were hired to be a witch. What did you think was going to happen if you lost your magic? You gave up your voice and your magic just to please him? That's a lot of emotional baggage. Knowing all that probably made the king really uncomfortable. Uh, so your request is to put this country back to the way it was before, right? How are we supposed to get things back to normal, though? <gasps> oh, I gotcha. So you want me to attack the king and destroy the sword next time he leaves the castle, right? <gasps> Perfect, Elena and I can share a room for the next month and we'll eat and sleep together and brush each other's hair! Oh, and we can save water by bathing together too! We'll go to the bathroom! <laughs> Let's move up the timeline a little. <sighs> okay, but if we can't actually lie, then how are we ever going to get inside? I mean, it doesn't look like we can just fly in from the sky. And ground security will be pretty tight, I'm guessing. Well, we are in a land of truth-tellers, so lying to gain access to the palace is not really an option. Except... Except what? I think we'll be needing that notepad of yours. We will? It's said that a picture is worth a thousand words, right? 
What business do you have here? I'm sorry, but you may not enter the palace without express permission from the king. Wait! You came back again? You were banished from here, don't you remember? It's okay. Go on, Saya. Explain the situation to the guard. Of course, Elena. Ahem. Mr. Doorman, sir, do you understand the words that we wrote down for you here? The banishment of Ehemia has been rescinded. She's to enter the castle. With the Ashen Witch, Elena, and the Charcoal Witch, we have permission from the king of this country? Are you serious? No way. You're lying to me, aren't you? How can you ask that in the land of truth tellers? I thought that lying in this country was impossible. That's true. Meaning that you'll let us enter? Wow, I can't believe that works! You really are a genius, Miss Elena. It's not a big deal. It was actually simple. We just had to write the sentences down in chunks. Since none of the parts contained any lies specifically, they could be written down. Then they just had to be read in the correct order. You could write practically anything at all, and the people here would believe it. Just like they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. We might find out soon enough. Well, it's all up to you, Ahemia. Lead the way to the infamous throne room. Oh, cool. Huh? Hmm? Hello there, creepy shadow man. Are you the king? Indeed, I am. Please let go of that sword, sire. Do as she says. Swords! <laughs> oh boy, the intruders are three witches. Look, one of them's Ahemia. Hey, long time no see. Uh, this is such a pain and I'm tired. The pretty flat-chested gray-haired one's my favorite. I think the boyish girl's my type. Uh, sorry, buddy. Unfortunately for you, my heart already belongs to another. Please don't look at me when you say that. More importantly, I'm going to need your help with handling all of the guards. That way I can focus on getting the truth sword from the king. You can count on Saya the Charcoal Witch! <laughs> It's over. Drop the sword. It's not over! This sword is my greatest achievement as a king, and with it I shall rule this land with verity! As long as I have it in my hand, I can lead the country in the right direction! I'll never let it go! Sorry, Sire. Truth King, did getting rid of lies make this country better? Of course! Isn't that obvious? The people don't like what you've done to them. Wait, what did you say? Sure, the people in your country can't lie, but that doesn't mean evil people won't keep doing bad things. <laughs> it's true that you became a country full of truth tellers, but this spell of yours can't just magically make everybody in it a better person. Just because people lie doesn't mean they're inherently evil or bad. Sometimes you need to lie so you don't hurt someone's feelings or ruin a relationship that's important to you. Without those little white lies, people will prey on each other's nerves and it causes them to fight. That's not true! If the sword is truth, then lies are like scabbards. Sheath it, sire! Sire? I said sire. Can you just focus on the guards, please? Ugh, you're always so bossy. Sticks and stones. So, if the sword represents truth and lies act as a scabbard, they keep us from swinging words around recklessly and hurting other people. We use lies to keep the truth inside. How dare you? Don't lecture me, witch. I hate to interrupt you, but there are too many guards and I'm running out of juice. If I keep going like this, my head might actually explode! <laughs> well then, it appears that poor Saya has reached her limit. Let's end this fight, shall we? What do you mean, end it? Seems like you've used everything you have just to hold back my attacks. I'm afraid you're wrong on that front. I've been prepared to take that sword from you for a while now. You can see for yourself. Uh, 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 <laughs> no! My tacky sword is gone! Selena, you broke the spell!
is it true? Was I actually wrong this entire time? No, Your Majesty. <gasps> your voice came back. I truly believe your desire for honesty arose from the best of intentions. I also believe that you would benefit from relaxing a little bit. The country won't fall apart if its people aren't always honest. You can still make it a great place to live, okay? Pretty decent, brother. Oh, thanks. I don't even remember what we were fighting about. <laughs> <laughs> the king recognized the error of his ways and apologized to the citizens of his country for making it so they could never tell a lie. I don't know if the country will ever be able to go back to how it was, but with Ahemia back at the palace, I'm sure it'll all work out. One way or another. We'll see. Madam Witches, thank you so much for your help. Please have a pleasant journey. Yeah, so... According to the association's rules, I'm supposed to give you a present to thank you for your help. Well, don't worry about it. Besides, if you do everything strictly by the book, you won't be able to improvise if you need to. But I already got something for you. It's nothing that big, I swear. Ta-da! It looks like a necklace. Because <laughs> it is. It's pretty, right? This thing cost me every coin I had, and I've been waiting and waiting to see you again so I could give it to you. <sighs> It's strange, but the whole reason I had to take this job was because I ran out of money. But then that same job led me here and I finally got to see you again, so it's like fate! I hope you'll treasure it forever and always think of me! Uh, okay. Thank you. It's a very thoughtful gift. Here, let me put it on for you. Oh, I can do it. Nah, it's easier this way. Oh yeah, it looks amazing. And see, now we're matching! <laughs> well, anyway, I should head back to the association branch office. Where will you go next? Who knows? That's the joy of being a traveler. <laughs> Back home, hooking your pinky with someone else's symbolizes a promise. Will you make a pinky promise with me? Oh. Let's promise we'll meet again someday. And maybe I can even introduce you to my sister. And I'm going to be a much better witch by then. Promise me, Elena. Yeah. I'll wait for that day while I continue on my travels. Pinky promise. divided. There was a left side and a right side, and the two did not get along. So, they built a wall. They agreed that they would keep to themselves and have no dealings with each other. That way, the people of both sides would be happy. Sometimes I wonder what the point of this thing is. Isn't the point of a wall fairly straightforward? Well, yes, it was originally built to keep the two sides apart since they have no desire to interact. And it certainly does that. But think of all the opportunities we're missing with it here. Oh. We want to make sure we're still winning against the other side. But how are we supposed to prove to them that we're better than they are when this wall prevents them from seeing us? Have any ideas that might help with our predicament, Madam Witch? Hmm. Let me think. Do you happen to have a knife, sir? Oh. Oh, oh yes, right here. And what are you planning to do with it, exactly? You'll see soon enough. Uh... Are you carving words into it? 
This side of the country is great, by the Witch of the Travels. And what is the meaning of this message? Well, this wall represents the rivalry between the left and the right, but you also want it to represent this side's superiority over the other, do you not? Hmm, well... My suggestion is, you encourage travelers who visit to carve words of praise into the wall. The more etchings on this side, the more it will prove that it's favored over the other. Uh, I don't know. That's not really how we do things around here. That's too bad. Because I've already seen the other side of the wall and it's covered in glowing remarks travelers have left in their wake. Oh. After that, I knew I had to quickly find my way to the other side. Oh, that's just too bad because I've seen the other side of the wall and it's already covered in glowing remarks travelers have left in their wake. <laughs> so that I could give them identical instructions. And thus, a brand new custom for travelers was born. When they arrive in this country, they pay a visit to the wall and carve their own words of... But why did it matter if the travelers carved words on the wall or not? Let me see. I suppose it was essentially a popularity contest. Popularity contest? It's a way of choosing the one that people like more. If one side had more etchings than the other one did, then they could say they had proof that travelers liked them better. Make sense? Uh-huh. So who won? Which of the sides turned out to be more popular? And how many more nice words did they have than the other side did? <laughs> That's something you'll just have to go see with your own eyes, dear. <clears throat> when I become a great traveling witch someday, I will. Wow, this is amazing. This country is the best. I've never been to such a great country. We got engaged in this spot today. Best friends forever. Whoa. <laughs> uh. um, pardon me, miss. Would you happen to be the witch the United Magic Association sent over? Yeah. I'm Saya the Charcoal Witch. It's a pleasure to meet you, good sir. I've heard a lot about this wall, but it's even more amazing in person. It's fascinating to see how many people enjoyed visiting this side of the country. This is the subject of our request. It is our hope that you can do something different with it. Do something different? The wall's been like this more than ten years, ever since a traveling witch suggested we have visitors leave messages. People seem to be losing interest in the old tradition, and we thought it might be time for something new. A new tradition, huh? I don't know. This one seems pretty great to me. I mean, it's hard to imagine something that would be a bigger draw than the famous wall etched by travelers. Uh, travelers? Oh, I've got it! Do you happen to have a knife I can borrow, please? Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. I love... Oh, wow, this is actually a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, mm -hmm. I love Miss Elena, I love Miss Elena, I love Miss Elena, Miss Elena, Miss Elena, Miss Elena, Miss Elena, Miss Elena. Oh, just what do you think you're doing? This wall was not built for you to declare your carnal desires! Excuse you, what do you think you're doing? Besides interrupting very important work. What is so important about name carving? This wall is a place for travelers to commemorate their experience in this country. Oh, so that's the rule? Then that's the change you need to make. What? Starting today, it's not going to be just for travelers anymore. Locals can carve their sentiments, too. Um, uh, That's right, they can carve their dreams or their crushes, and they can etch in things like, I love Miss Elena, so what? And what would be the reason for doing that? Hmm? Just think. The citizens are the ones who wanted it in the first place, right? Doesn't that mean they should be the ones who get to enjoy it the most? Instead of being a wall that's just meant for travelers, make it something that encourages those who live here to remember what's most important to them. Interesting. Thanks for this. I gotta run now, though. <laughs> right. It turns out I've got a job on the other side of the wall, too. One might ask, why is it that my heart was swelling with anticipation on that day? The answer is, 
because I was about to visit the country that had words etched into its wall, just as I had read about in the adventures of Nikkei, the book that had meant so much to me throughout my life. Uh... What happened to the wall? Would you like a souvenir or two from your trip today? It's not just ordinary stone, it's debris from our famous wall. No, debris from the wall is still just debris. My, if it isn't a traveling witch. It's been more than a decade. Forgive me, gentlemen, but how do you know who I am? Uh, your face actually looks a bit younger than it did back then. I'll say. And that's not the only thing different about you. I'll say. I suppose you aren't her. That's most unfortunate. Well, for a moment I thought the two of you might actually be officials of this country. But perhaps I was wrong and you're just a couple of boorish old men. We are indeed this country's officials. And I guess we're also boorish old men. Uh, in any case, maybe you can help me. See, I came to see the famous wall, but it appears to be in pieces now. The two gentlemen then explained why the wall was now rubble. Apparently, another witch had visited this country a little before I did. At her advice, the citizens gained permission to carve anything they wished into the wall. At first, they were overjoyed with their new outlet. But as days passed, and then weeks... Guess it wasn't forever after all, considering we broke up. I wrote what? It's not even true! I was drunk! What the hell? Travelers say what happens on the trip stays on the trip, then they move on. But when the etchings are by and about the people who live there, their permanence may transform into painful memories that can't be escaped. And so, they agreed it was best to tear down the wall. Before they knew it, the resentment they felt toward the people on the other side didn't seem to exist anymore. Everybody here was completely convinced they were better than those who resided on the other side of the wall. But then they saw all of the embarrassing things they wrote themselves, and they realized that wasn't the case after all. I guess it turns out this country never even needed a wall to begin with. We've got more in common than we knew. I suspect we'll be quite content living peacefully in our ordinary country. <sighs> now then, if you'll please excuse us, Madam Witch. Um, <laughs> before you go, would you mind telling me which side had more praises etched into it before the wall was torn down? Isn't that obvious? It was the same on both sides. The same? We were two halves of a single country. And we all worked equally hard not to lose the silly competition we had with the other side. But how could you compete with the other side if you had no way of seeing how much they were accomplishing and what you were up against? That's how we convinced ourselves that we were better, by refusing to look on the other side of the wall. Yes, that was true for our side as well. I feel certain that it worked out for the best. A country doesn't belong to tourists or travelers. It's a home for those who live there, and they should always take priority. I am disappointed that I couldn't see the wall, of course. I wonder if Nikkei carved those words knowing that doing so would ultimately lead to the wall being torn down. No, there's no way. Hello, Madam Witch. Would you like a piece of the wall as a souvenir? I might as well. I wonder which of these I should pick. This one. Nice choice! Thanks for visiting! LA. <laughs> Lovely. It looks like we have yet another excellent harvest this year. These grapes are going to make some delicious wine. Of course they are, darling. I can't wait. Uh, Grandpa! Oh. Look it! This is what I'm gonna wear for the grape throwing festival! I like it. Looks good on you, kid. <laughs> oh, will you tell me the story of the very first grape throwing festival again? Let me see. Where to begin? Ah, I know. It all happened a very long time ago, when our village was still split into two different places. That village and this village. And all we ever did was fight. One day, we had a special visitor. She was a traveling witch, 
and a major part of our history. Welcome to this village, Madam Witch. Is that its real name? Yes. See, our village is called this village. But should you venture onto the other side of the road, then you'll find yourself in that village. Oh, I've heard of you. This and that villages are famous for their wine, right? Indeed. It's been our specialty for many years. So, Madam Witch, do you enjoy a good vintage? I've never had any before. That's why I traveled here. Hmm? It will be my very first drink. So I wanted to make sure that it was something memorable. Well, no worries there. You came to exactly the right place if that's what you're after. Our wine is far superior to what they make in that village. It is truly the nectar of the gods. That's quite a statement. So, is that the wine you boast of? Oh, um, no. Uh, this wine is actually from that village. <laughs> yes, in their desperate bid to increase their sales of it, they had the nerve to do this! Grape stomping maiden Rosemary. From that village. And there's a quote from her saying, I lovingly stepped on every grape. The worst part is that it's working. This label of the lovely Rosemary has indeed driven their sales up significantly. Uh... If that village is to be believed, Rosemary herself is the wine's place of origin. Its place of origin? That's right. Not the one who made it, but where it came from. They know suggesting something like that will tempt more people to buy it. But how? <laughs> well, quite frankly, customers have certain fetishes and appealing to them is an important aspect of any business. So, I take it it's selling well? Only because a beautiful woman is stepping lovingly on the grapes! Stepping lovingly? Well then, why doesn't this village get a beautiful woman of its own? Yes! One who can step just as lovingly upon grapes as Rosemary! You're a genius! Uh, it's true, that's what we need! If we get a sweet maiden to step lovingly on our grapes, then we'll crush the competition for sure! And since it was your idea, will you do us the honors? Well... Huh? Everybody, Madam Witch said she'll step lovingly on our grapes all day! A cute witch is gonna step lovingly on our grapes! Why oh right, would she step on me too? They're making complete fools of themselves. Mm -mm -mm. What a bunch of idiots. Um, wait, we need to get her ready! Yes! Don't be bashful, Madam Witch! I assure you this is what all the best grape stomping maidens wear! It makes them more tempting. I'm not so sure. Ready? Go! Goodness! Whatever are you up to here? <laughs> well, hello there, chief of the village that won't be around for very much longer. It's really you. The beautiful grape stomping maiden Rosemary. The beautiful Rosemary. Oh my! And what might that bottle you're clutching to your chest be? No, uh... it looks an awful lot like my label. Mm -hmm. Could it be this village chief's a fan of mine? Who, me, a fan of yours? No, of course not. I would never. Well, I would be more than happy to sign the label if you like. Really? Oh. Wait, who in the world is this poor, undersized creature masquerading as a grape-stomping maiden? A traveling witch, thank you. Oh, you're a witch? Mm -hmm. I think I understand. You're intimidated by my success, so you found someone to step lovingly on your grapes. A pity she's so scrawny. <laughs> who are you calling scrawny? Such a plain face! A plain face, huh? Honestly, her figure's just like a child's. Okay, now you've taken it too far. No way. She's not like a child. She actually is one. You convinced a child to play dress up and step lovingly on some grapes. But you think that's enough to beat me? <laughs> Sorry, I have to go. You know what, Chief? You can count me in. <gasps> I'm your grape-stomping maiden!
You truly did an excellent job, Madam Witch. I feel like I stomped about a million grapes today. So, how much wine do you think it'll end up making? Let's see. I would say we're looking at around half a cask. That's it? Even after all of that stomping? <sighs> the life of a grape stomping maiden certainly not an easy one. What about that stuff? How much have they sold? Well, I'm not sure of the exact number, but it's a lot. Maybe even thousands of bottles by now. Based on today, I'd say Rosemary would have to spend every waking moment of her life stomping grapes in order to produce that many bottles, and even then it might not be enough. Oh. Does that seem strange to you? It does. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, boys. I know you can stomp harder than that. Don't you want to sell wine with my lovely face on it? Then pick up the face! I'm beginning to think that the wine in those bottles wasn't lovingly stepped on by Rosemary after all. Wow, you're a quick one. Wait. Admit it. The wine's point of origin has been misrepresented. This is the kind of case that could be brought to court. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, jeez. We've been found out. Huh? We were selling so many, too. It's kind of amazing. It took this long, actually. I can't believe it. The wine we thought was imbued with the essence of rosemary was in fact stomped by the feet of those large men. Tragic! Oh. Why does it even matter who stepped on the grapes? It tastes the same! Oh my, I've never had a glass of wine before now, but it really is quite tasty. It's the connection that's so important. Even if the flavor is still the same, the experience isn't because Rosemary wasn't the one who lovingly stomped the grapes. Don't you see? That's what it takes to satisfy a true fetishist! Shut your mouth! Rosemary did nothing wrong! You shut your mouth! You charge! Get him! You leave our chief alone! Let's hit every last one of us. We were all knocked out. And when we finally came to, we discovered that the witch had already left. Oh. And that's the story of how the grape throwing festival began. Turned out it was a good way to release stress, so it became a tradition we celebrated during harvest time every single year. And before we knew it, the two villages set aside their differences and united as one. Wow, that nice witch really helped us out, didn't she, Grandpa? Yes, she <laughs> sure did. So what happened to Rosemary? <laughs> now that, my boy... Yes? Uh, well... That's a story I can tell you another time. For now, let's have some lunch. How about you go and wash up? Okay! Ripening over the years into something truly amazing, and still tempting me no matter how old. Hey, you deserve a break. How about some lunch? Sure. <laughs> Have you heard of the witch with flowing ashen hair gliding gracefully through the sky on her broom? Who is this beauty, lovely and delicate as a porcelain doll, that challenges the summer sun to outshine itself? That's right. It's still me. <sighs> oh. 
The weather's quite warm today. I wish I had dressed a little bit lighter. This country is really rather creepy. I've gathered you here today to discuss the recent crimes. If you have any relevant information, please inform me. My poor me. BB's shoes are about to fall off! You know well, there's one thing that's to be clear. The people living here certainly love their dolls. I'm taking this seriously, as is the entire association. So I she's from I the United Magic Association? I changed her clothes today. Tell me what you think! She's adorable! Something big must have happened, but I can't tell what. What about you? Did you have a nasty encounter with the Ripper? Huh? Did she say the Ripper? Hmm. No, I didn't. But I know the lives of four women were senselessly taken from them. Another victim appeared this morning. A woman with green hair this time. Does that mean five? And that's just this year, too. If we include all the incidents from the past few years, the number's at least over a hundred. It's pretty disturbing to think that more than a hundred women have lost their lives here in the past few years. What about you? <gasps> yes, I saw the whole thing. Tell me everything you know right now. I believe it happened about seven years ago on a night when the moon was full. There was a man who transformed into a werewolf. Oh, no, I heard the culprit was a cat woman. Well, I heard you couldn't even tell whether or not they were male or female. That's what my cousin's friend's boyfriend's ex-girlfriend told me. Oh, perfect. That's not true. The culprit is a doll. It comes to life at night and terrorizes women. It's a nightmare. Stay here if you want. I'm going to go hide in my parents' house. Wow. It sounds like things are pretty bad. Pardon me. Do you have a minute? Sure. What is it? Are you a citizen of this country? Oh no, I'm a traveler. <sighs> the name's Sheila, and I'm known as the Night Witch. As I'm sure you can probably tell, I was sent to this place by the United Magic Association. I'm the Ashen Witch, Elena. Hmm. I wonder, do you happen to know anything about the crimes that occurred here? If you're asking about the Ripper, then yes, I do. How would you know about that if you're just a traveler? Oh, I overheard you discussing it with the townspeople just a moment ago. But unfortunately, I don't know anything else about it beyond that. Ugh. Well, that's annoying. No one knows anything in this town. They just want everyone else to think they do. Hmm. If you stumble upon any useful leads, please let me know. I'll be at the assembly hall, so feel free to track me down there. I really don't think I'll learn anything, but you'll be the first to know. Take care. I realize dolls are the local specialty here, but I didn't expect to see them everywhere. They're giving away dolls for free? talking I made this little beauty myself along with all the others in here hold on your mouth is moving feel free to look around and take whatever you want the sign outside says they're free yep but why would you do that the store is so run down uh, I mean couldn't your store use some help no I'm all right money means nothing to me all I need is a happy face and I'm content that's why I make so many dolls and hand them out to residents here as gifts. <laughs> That's very noble of you. If there's one that calls to you, take it with you, Miss Mage. Uh, I'm not actually a mage, you see. Don't be shy. Please, pick your favorite. What about that one over there? It's one of our most popular. Well, I would, but, um... Unfortunately, I'm afraid I don't have any room left in my bag. Thank you. Please excuse me. S 
Too bad. To say money holds no interest. I had no idea there are people with such charitable hearts like that. Okay, you're all set. It's room five on the third floor. Thanks. There's one in here, too. There, that's much better. Sleep tight. It's a strange country. Every building is made of red brick and every person carries around a doll. Feels so good. Wait, I don't remember opening the window. Oh well. <laughs> First. I'll eat breakfast, then head on to the next town. Wait a minute. What's happening? <sighs> and did you have a nasty encounter with the Ripper, sir? The lives of four women were senselessly taken. My hair. It's like someone stole my life. I'm sure it comes as no surprise, but this was definitely the work of the Ripper. I figured as much. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm a little shocked that a witch would fall victim to that deviant. <laughs> well, I suppose I should investigate the scene of the crime. And what am I supposed to do while you investigate? Just relax and stay out of the way. Hmm. There's nothing here. Nope, nothing suspicious under the bed either. The only suspicious thing in this room at the moment is the witch who just upended my bed! Hey, in case you've forgotten, I came here to help you. We're almost done now. That's the only place left. That's the doll's hair. The doll? There was a doll sitting on my nightstand, but I moved it in there instead. My thought as much. You thought what exactly? All the incidents seem to follow the same pattern. Every victim is attacked while they're sleeping. A doll from their room disappears, but strangely, some of its hair gets left behind. But why? I assume they took the doll's hair out to replace it with the victim's. That's odd. It could be a means of controlling the dolls with magic. So... What now? Why are you asking me? Are you going to investigate or not? Of course I'm going to! Let's catch that coward, cut off their head, and send them to hell to think long and hard about what they did! Yeah, that's a bit extreme. Is something wrong? Uh, no. I was just noticing how scrawny you are. Well, shall we be off? Sorry, remind me what your name is again? I told you that already. I'm Elena, the Ashen Witch. Huh? Huh. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Now let's go.
Have a nice day. What's the matter? Look at the hair on that doll. The texture and sheen are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, I guess they are. It actually kind of reminds me of human hair. <laughs> if you wish to remain unscathed, then you'll tell us exactly how this doll came to be in your possession. I thought so. This really is human hair, isn't it? Come on, spit it out! I got her at a secret auction. Secret auction, eh? Uh, yes. It's an underground event where they sell custom-made dolls like my dear little lady there. Liz is getting creepier by the second. And where, pray tell, is this illicit affair being held? We're not far now. Is it so wrong for me to feel a little excited? If you only hide your eyes, isn't it sort of obvious who's behind the mask? It's the spirit of the thing that's really important here. When you conceal part of your face, doesn't it make you feel a bit like you're doing something you shouldn't be? No, the fact that it's a secret auction makes me feel like I'm doing something I shouldn't. Now oh, hush. has the feel of an old opera house, doesn't it? Apparently, that's precisely what it used to be. Huh. The wage is nearly over, my sweet little Masa. We're going to get you a girlfriend today for sure. I need to win. I want to win. I have to win. I'm going to win. I've been pinching pennies ever since I blew my chance at the last auction. I'm not going to leave until I win her. Who's my cutie wootie? Ugh, you can smell the desperation. I don't understand how anyone can get this worked up about some dolls. I don't get it either. Though I suppose I can see the appeal of owning something unorthodox that isn't sold in broad daylight. <sighs> Welcome, one and all, to tonight's special event. We can't wait for you to see what's on the block this evening. If you've got the money, we've got the dolls. Are you ready? <laughs> And now, without further ado, feast your eyes on our first item tonight! Uh, unorthodox may be an understatement. Not what I expected. Fifty! One hundred! Yes! I hear one hundred over here, going once, twice! One fifty! Three hundred! Three hundred! Sold to the fat one! <laughs> She's ours! I wonder if all the dolls okay. will be life-size like that one. Surely not. I imagine those must be pretty rare. We'll start the bidding at 250! <laughs> it is the same, but worse. <laughs> Next up on the block, this scintillating mink! <laughs> uh, I vote we just leave. Now then, everyone, it is my sincere pleasure to present to you the crowning jewel of tonight's festivities! Here we go. You see the one with the ash-colored hair? She really looks like the doll that was in my room back at the inn. No way is that a coincidence. That has to be her, which means that's my hair. Look closely. To make these dolls look even more realistic, we've wefted them with 100% authentic human hair. I suppose that confirms it's all the victim's hair. Easy now. How dare they steal from me? Every last one of them deserves to die! Hey now, settle down. The bidders don't know how the hair was obtained. I'm not to blame. And if that's not enough, these came straight from the talk of the town! The river! So how about it? Ugh, oh, damn it. They're making it hard to be forgiving. Ready, folks? Let the bidding begin! <laughs> She's a victim? All of you are enemies of women. For that crime alone, you deserve to die. But I believe the Ripper is also among us tonight. 
Come out and face me, you coward! Not going to show yourself? Alrighty then. How about now? Would you kindly refrain from being so horrible to my creation? So it was you all along. Yup, it was me! The moment you set foot in my shop, I thought, that hair is so lovely, I can't do without it! And you claim that you didn't care about money. But that's because your plan was to strike it rich at the secret auction. No, dear. Money itself truly doesn't interest me. Sure, I turn a profit at these events, quite a bit in fact, but I immediately donate every cent to the poor. <laughs> so why bother with this ripper business? I thought you said you love to see people's smiling faces. I promise none of your crimes left the victim smiling. You don't understand. Then explain it. I meant it when I said I adore seeing people's happy faces. The bidders here love my special human hair dolls enough to pay hundreds. And when I donate that money, it makes everyone happy, happy, happy. And their faces are so divine. But oh, I would be remiss to ignore the beauty of faces that are sad. Or one full of fury. Or in of laughter. Do you get it now? Expressions of human emotion are really wonderful, aren't they? Oh, I can't contain it any longer. That look of pure anger on your face is almost more than I can stand. Uh -huh. No, stop. That's enough. I'd like to get this over with. Apologies, Miss Mage, but I'm actually a witch. I'm not someone a child can win against. Oh, no, I'm a witch too. Huh. Which means, this is the end for you, I'm afraid. Exciting evening. Thank you, Elena. Believe me, it was my pleasure. Ah! Wait, what are you gonna do with me? Oh, are you still angry? Let me see you get madder. I want to see what wrath looks like on you. was apprehended by the Night Witch, Shima, and taken to a branch of the United Magic Association. going in to collect the reward for you. You think you can wait here nice and quiet? Does it feel good to get the reward? Show me. Let me see your expression of radiant joy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, is that you, Teach? Uh, Were you waiting there for me to get back? No, I haven't been here for very long. I'm almost out of money again, though, so I came to find work. Where in the world did you pick this crazy one up? I can't say I like the stranger danger way she's looking at me. Oh, you're so adorable, and I bet your mad face is even cuter! It's a long story. She's special. <laughs> if you must know, She's the Ripper who cut off women's hair and used it for creepy dolls. She's so evil, in fact, she even stole the hair of a traveling witch. Uh, hold on, did you say a traveling witch? Indeed. She had a pointy hat and a necklace that looked just like yours and beautiful ashen hair. <gasps> she had ash-colored hair? The same necklace? Would you look at that face? Even though we're perfect strangers, I can still read the anger in your eyes. I suggest you start talking right now. Ah! That expression of pure rage! Delicious!
was this frail yet beautiful woman, all alone in the plaza of the clock village of Ristolf. Who is this despondent soul, broken, starving, who looks like she's about to cry? That's right, it's me. I hate to admit it, but it's me. <sighs> I don't suppose I could make a lot of money with freelance work. I'm seeking to recruit a freelance witch looking for ultra short-term work. It's a chance to make a lot of money. <gasps> if you are interested, please come to the following address immediately. All right, let's see. Who is this from? The Lavender Witch Estelle. Now then, Elena. Since you've come all this way to pay me a visit, I can only assume you're here answering my advertisement. Mm, of course I am, and I believe you mentioned it was high paying. So, you're willing to work? If it were possible, I'd much rather make money without working. Oh, I see. Motivation aside, a witch is a witch. So, you strike me as being fairly young, are you? Well, I'm actually 18 this year. When did you become a witch? I got my title when I was 14. Huh. Only a year later than I did. Oh, and how old were you when you started your apprenticeship? When I was 10, I think. So it took you three whole years to become a full-fledged witch then. It took me just a single year to accomplish that. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Mm. May I ask how old you are right now? I'm only 19. <gasps> a year older than me! Sorry. You're not making fun of me, are you? No, no. Of course not. Perhaps we could get back to the money now? You really don't care at all what the job entails, do you? Very well. Let's talk compensation then, shall we? <gasps> Contingent upon success, of course. You can expect to be paid in full when the job is complete. Are you serious? Yes, I'm very serious. Uh, okay, but what kind of ultra short-term job could possibly be worth this much to you? Oh dear, you aren't getting nervous now, are you? Don't you worry. I'm simply looking for someone to accompany me on a little field trip of sorts. Field trip? Where to? Hmm. Tell me something. Do you know the story of the second district murderer? The second district murderer? I don't, but it doesn't sound pleasant. No, it wasn't. And every word of what they say is true. Everyone here knows it. There's a book and even a stage adaptation. Ten years ago, a burglar broke into a home in the second district. The wealthy couple inside were brutally killed in the confrontation. But their daughter, Selena, survived, as she was out shopping at the time. The one bright spot of this tragedy. It didn't last long, though. Selena was taken in by her uncle and suffered horrible abuse at his hands. Darkness grew inside her heart, and she quickly came to despise other people and the entire wretched world. Eventually, she snapped and murdered her uncle. She stabbed him over and over, and then she disappeared. Is she? Yes, she's the second district murderer. Selena used to be my best friend in the world. We were so close, you could say we were almost like sisters. But I went to study magic abroad. I was gone for years, and by the time I came back, Selena was already too far gone. She had tasted blood, and discovered obscene joy in taking life, killing again and again. Three years ago, she was finally found and executed. I was the one who had to do it. I caught her. And killed her. Beheaded her. With my own hands. But the truth is, I wish I could have helped her. She deserved a chance to atone. Unfortunately, when you're employed by the Crown, the King's orders are absolute. 
<clears throat> Back to the flyer. Does this have anything to do with the job posting you put out? Where do you need me to accompany you? It's important for you to know the entire story. Because you and I are going to save her. Or what now? Didn't you just tell me that you beheaded the girl three years ago? I did. So we're going back to ten years ago. You intend to travel back in time? How's that going to work? I made a vow on the day of Selena's execution and began researching time travel magic to give us both another chance. I wanted to avoid that heartbreaking ending. Going back to the beginning is the only way. Ten years ago, that little girl was still a decent human being. Preventing the burglar from killing Selena's parents should be enough. No uncle, no abuse. I'll be there for her this time. I don't want to live in a world without her in it anymore. This will work. It has to. I understand the situation, but not the need for outside help. Once you actually arrive in the past, why do you need me? Follow me. The method I created to go back in time is not simple by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't something I could accomplish without making sacrifices. Meaning what? When a mage doesn't have enough magic to carry out a task, sacrificing something of themselves generates more, right? Ah, uh, yes. I've heard of that being done. Things like their voice or their memories. <laughs> and that's what you did? You don't seem any worse for wear, so what did you have to give up? Blood. <sighs> I've been letting as much as I can stand to store it. And I've been saving up my natural power as well. <gasps> to travel back that far, you need an astounding amount of magic, and I'm almost tapped. But, it's still not enough, so I only have one choice. Are you going to give something else up? That shouldn't be necessary, but it will require every last ounce of magic I have left. In other words, once you arrive in the past, you'll be completely defenseless against any attack. So you decided you would hire another witch to protect you in case something should happen while you're there? Mm. Close, but not quite. <clears throat> what are those? If we put these rings on, we'll have access to each other's magic. That's incredible. So, let me get this straight then. As long as both of us wear these things, you can access my power to do magic while you have none of your own, right? That's correct. So, will you do it? Well, I am a traveling witch. So naturally, I'm a little interested to see how different this country was ten years ago. Are you ready, Elena? Mm. All right, then. Let's get going. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine. Just a little anemic. You're starting to sweat. I told you I'm fine. Are you sure we should do this now? Yes, I'm positive. If I don't take the first chance I get, who's to say if I'll ever get another one? <laughs> yeah, you're right. So I'll ask you again. Are you ready? Yes, but the question is, are you? Absolutely. I've been ready for years! The 
this paper is ten years old. I can't believe it. You really did it. Let's hurry. Our time limit here is one hour. As soon as the clock strikes six, that's it. Ready or not, we'll be pulled back to the present. Are you sure we can't stick around longer? I would have bought more time for us if I could have, but... Have faith. It's enough. As long as we keep a clear head, in the next 60 minutes, we are gonna change the next 10 years. I assume you have a plan? In about 20 minutes, a burglar who's wearing a black hood is going to break into Selena's home and stab her parents repeatedly. All we should have to do is get them out before that happens, and then ambush the burglar ourselves. Piece of cake, right? I just hope it all goes smoothly. I'll make sure it does. This is all for Selena. With her parents alive, she'll get to grow up healthy and safe. In that case, this will probably trigger some pretty significant changes in the ten year later with stuff we go back to, won't it? No, that won't happen. Yes, we're meddling in the past, but that doesn't change the fact that I kill Selena in the future. You see, the world that we go back to will be exactly the same as when we left. But creating a world without the murderer will cause a brand new timeline to branch out, separate from our own. Uh, I'm sorry if this comes off as a bit rude, but what's the point of saving her then? That definitely came off as rude. I just meant, what's the point if Selena will still end up executed in our own timeline? But there is a point. Saving her will make it easier for me to bear. Because it means there's a different future where Selena will be happy. That's all I want. And you truly believe it will work? Yes, I honestly do. <gasps> uh, hey! Come back! <gasps> Selena! Weird. I'm sorry. I don't understand. I couldn't help myself. When I saw you, I just wanted to hug you. That sounds like something a pervert would do. What if I told you I'm from the future? <sighs> How fascinating, but I should really get back to my shopping now. Excuse me. Right, of course. <laughs> Not long now, I promise. Goodness, she sure gave you the cold shoulder, didn't she? That's just how Selena's always been. She may act cold, but deep down inside, I know that she's a very kind-hearted girl. Trust me on this one. Now let's go. We don't have much time. You're Estelle's older half-sister. I had no idea, but the two of you do look a lot alike. They sure do. You can see it in the nape of your neck. It's slender and graceful. It's exactly like Estelle's. That's really not important. But it's so strange. Oh, is it? Anyway, I have a message here from our father. He needs to talk to you about something that happened to Estelle during her studies abroad. It's imperative that you come with me immediately. This seems rather unusual. Well, we should go and talk to him. He'll be so glad. This way, please. as she seems, then the whole fight will probably be settled by the time I even get there. Is 
it already over? attention but of course nobody ever noticed because we acted happy so i decided to kill them both you think people will forgive me no why would you think that i was so surprised it's funny that you happened to show up at the exact same time i planned to kill them tell me did you guys actually come from the future why does that matter if it's true that you're some kind of time travelers then you must know stuff can you tell me what happens to me in the future you get killed by your best friend. Oh, wow. That sounds bad. And weird, since I don't even have a best friend. Hey! I think I figured it out! I should have seen it sooner! This girl must be the future Estelle, right? <laughs> she is! But why would she want to kill me? Because, Selena. You become a murderer. A murderer? Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. How so? For starters, killing people is so... Fun! <laughs> Forgive you. <laughs> you were still alive? Yes, I did stab you in that. <laughs> Selena! This whole time, you were just lying to me. I thought we were supposed to be friends. <laughs> Look at you. You're really trying to kill me, aren't you? <laughs> and when I become a murderer of the future, you will. I came here because we were friends. I thought you would go back to normal if I could save your parents. But it was you this entire time. You were always the murderer. Liar! <laughs> Sorry about it now. You have to die. You have to die. You have to die. Selena, farewell.
Estelle? You're Elena, right? What did I do? What happened? So you don't remember? About Selena? Who's that? You sacrificed your memories for more power. I see. Was she someone important to me? Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Stop it. She killed her. Again. Murdered her best friend twice. Who am I? Just an ordinary traveler. Just a normal witch. <laughs> Inexperienced. <laughs> Wow, this thing looks ancient. Do you know what it does? No clue. Apparently, we confiscated it a long time ago as a part of some case. I see. So, what do you want me to do with it, then? Well, for starters, you can head across the ocean to the west and look for a place called Knorts, the Town of Freedom. Then you're gonna find their United Magic Association office and place this box right into their loving arms. Great! You make one delivery and get paid. What an easy job, right? Yeah, that sounds too easy. I mean, if it's so simple, why are you giving it to me instead of doing it yourself? Because I'm way too busy getting ready for my vacation. Vacation? It's time I take a break from all my hard work. Uh, uh... I don't care how tempting it looks, do not open that box. No telling what kind of evil lurks inside. Aye, aye, sir! No boxes will be opened here! And I'm off! Bye! Woohoo! We have fun. All right. Of course you're working at the most pretentious place that you could find. Can you believe it's been a whole year? My, my, how time does fly. They say time and tide wait for no one, right? Yes, oh, ancient one. Anyway, are you ready to get out of here yet? I mean, can we, you know, leave or not? Could you please give me just a moment? I'll be ready soon. So, Miss Friend. Are you off on urgent business somewhere? Well, no. It's vacation. <laughs> vacation? Goodbye! <gasps> you kids be good now. Don't slack off on your magic exercises. <laughs> You took on an apprentice. Yeah, and her name is Saya. And apparently she knows your apprentice as well. Saya. Oh yes, I think I remember her now. The girl Elena helped become an apprentice witch. It's such a small world, isn't it? It certainly is. I've met your Elena too. Have you now? Saya was so jealous when I told her. She was ready to give up on life right then and there. <laughs> It's strange when you think about it. What is? The two of us. I never imagined we would end up vacationing together every year like this. It is odd. I didn't even like you at first, Fran. I didn't like you either, and here we are. <laughs> this is the story of an unlikely friendship. It begins when I was still an apprentice witch traveling the world with my teacher. Uh what? I'm so sorry I missed it. What did you say, ma'am? I was saying I may want to train another apprentice. But you have an apprentice. Me? Sure, but I could always use another one. 
I think you should make that decision on your own. I probably won't be much help. But you would be upset if I made this decision without asking your opinion first, right? Does that mean you're looking at options? Or do you already know exactly who you want? Bingo! I knew it. You don't have to worry, Fran. What makes you say that? She's a good girl. And I'm confident you two will get along beautifully. Hmm. Well, it's about time. Huh? A bit tardy, aren't we, Teach? That's not a very good example to set for me, you know. <clears throat> I apologize for the wait. It took a little longer than expected to convince my apprentice. I do wish you'd refrain from telling lies like that. Huh. She's supposed to be my senior apprentice? You just picked the weakest girl you could find? <laughs> what? What are you staring at? You're either starting a fight or you're obsessed with me. I'm sorry, ma'am. Did you say she was a good girl? She has done nothing but insult and attack me since we got here. You want to say that to my face? <sighs> now, now, girls. You should try and get along since you're working together. Let's play nice. <sighs> I guess you're right. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? That's for me to know and for you to cry about. <sighs> <laughs> Sheila, this is Fran. Fran, this is Sheila. Try your best to get along. <laughs> it won't work. She can't be kind. <laughs> huh? And so, after that brief introduction, my teacher and I began our journey with Sheila, one I was sure would end in disaster. The two of us were like oil and water. Fundamentally incompatible. <sighs> what do you girls think we should have for dinner? Fish? Or beef, perhaps? Fish sounds good to me. <laughs> you mean beef, don't you? No. What? You're dying to fight me, aren't you? Is fighting the only thing you can talk about? You sound so stupid. Like, seriously stupid. Talk about irony. Can you hear yourself? Aren't you a little mm. old to have such a limited vocabulary? Hmm? Right. Let's meet in the middle and just have bread. Hmm? I'll give you a choice. Fire or ice magic. Which would you like to learn today? Definitely ice magic. What? Don't listen to her. Fire magic, obviously. Right. Then how about we meet in the middle and just take a little nap? <laughs> Let's say your opponent manages to take your wand away. How do you think you should get it back? With martial arts! No way! Is that what we're doing today? I think using a bow would be faster and cleaner. <gasps> right, so on second thought, perhaps we should meet in the middle and just learn how to use knives. But why knives? You keep them concealed in your clothing. Until it's time to draw them. When you do, try to make it look a little bit sexy. Uh, uh. You're the only person I've ever met that I could never see myself being friends with. Well, isn't that a coincidence? You happen to be the only person that exists that I could never be friends with. <laughs> Sheila and I traveled together for many months. Along the way, we took a job for the United Magic Association. It was located in Kunortz, also known as the Town of Freedom. No mages allowed. Mages feed on your fear. Mages are children of the devil. What the heck is that about? Are they trying to pick a fight with us or what? It <gasps> appears that those of us who use magic in our lives are not welcome in this country. I wouldn't go that far. <sighs> Perhaps not everyone thinks this way. We shouldn't let a handful of posters make us assume the worst of an entire country. If we do, then we are no different than whomever put up these signs condemning everyone who uses magic. <laughs> Welcome, Madam Witch. We have been anxiously waiting for you. I'll cut to the chase. This job is a doozy and will be extremely challenging. How much did you say that it pays? Uh, uh, wouldn't it be better to go over what the job entails before we discuss our terms, though? What does it pay? Uh, we're offering ten gold coins, Madam Witch. Oh. Wow. 
She looks really happy with that. All right, tell me about the job. Okay. There's a new criminal group calling themselves the Curio Company. They're terrorizing our town and stirring up trouble behind the scenes. Ooh, the Curio Company. I'm sure you've seen the posters and signs that are hanging all around town. You know, the ones with multiple threats defaming mages? Uh-huh. We have... The Curio Company is a band of robbers made up of people who can't use magic. Because they have no magic, they despise those who do, especially when they get in the way of the group's criminal activities. As a result, they make it their mission to harass and intimidate mages. Great! I don't understand why you don't just catch them and put them away. You're all mages, aren't you? Piece of cake. It just seems a little extreme to pay travelers when you're perfectly capable of taking care of your own town. And I don't disagree with you, but... <coughs> Perhaps you could elaborate a bit. Right. Well, you see, this company, they have tools that we don't understand. Can you try to explain them to us? Yes, of course. Let's see. There's a sword that can cut an unlimited number of times without dulling, and guns that shoot hundreds of bullets without reloading, and matches that project visions of mythical beasts. These mysterious objects seem to intensify the user's natural talents, making them as powerful as, or more powerful than, an actual mage. Tools like that really exist? Yes. And this group can use them very skillfully. They lead mages around by their noses, and then escape without a trace every time. Nobody in town trusts mages anymore. Everyone believes they're completely useless. Uh... Hmm, I think I understand. Very well. You have my word this issue will be taken care of. Thank you! That's excellent to hear! And it's very reassuring to have a refined witch such as yourself on board for this monument. Oh. No, I won't be helping you today. But these two will, right? Huh? Yep, I want you ladies to catch the Curio Company together. Sure, maybe they do have some annoying weapons, but believe in the me that believes in you. Uh... You're my talented apprentices. Uh... And if you mess it up, you'll be expelled. Expelled? When I think back on it, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you and I have the same idea. We both planned on being the one to catch the Curio Company and get the other girl expelled in the process. Ah, wait, stop! Please have mercy! I'm begging you to spare me! I'll admit that I'm guilty! Just please don't hurt me! Ah! Yes, I suppose I can do that. If you hand over your sword, I'll let you leave with your pathetic life. My sword? Is that it? Fine, it's all yours! Take the dumb thing! That's not it. I also have a few questions. Hey, not so fast. Huh? I saw this loser first. So the little pumpkin belongs to me. That's surprising considering I cornered him. Oh, that's cute. What you don't know is that I just used you to catch him for me. And that gives me a better claim to him than you. You get it now? No, and even if I did, I still wouldn't hand him over to you. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Look at what you've done. It's like you're trying to ruin everything. Do you think this will make our teacher like you more? Shut it, Franny. Stop acting like you know me. <laughs> Stupid butterflies. And just like that, we became entangled in an endless loop of sabotage. A few days passed, but with no luck. Our mission hadn't changed, but we were unable to catch anyone from the Curio Company. Pardon the intrusion. I heard you're that witch they call Fran, right? Oh, and where did you hear that? The details don't really matter. How's your work going? Well, I hope. It's a bit too soon to tell, honestly. Curio Company leader declares they'll behead any mages who attack their comrades. That's some headline. <laughs> well, goodness gracious, sounds like it's starting to get real violent out there. Indeed. But thankfully, that's what I was after. You don't say, even with them claiming they want to behead ya? That doesn't bother me. I mean, then they would come looking for me, right? If anything, it would remove the hassle of hunting them. Oh, you're a confident girl, aren't you? Yeah, why not? You did exactly what I wanted. You came to me. Are you the leader of the Curio Company?
Oh, come on. You're not thinking of resisting, are you? Because if you make any sudden moves, then I'll have no choice but to cut your head off right here and now, just like the newspaper promised. Wrap her up to go and let's dispose of her ass. Right. Wow, you must be a pretty useless senior apprentice if you got caught that easily. Says the girl who also got caught. If anyone around here is useless, it would definitely be you. You mages have always been a real pain in the rear end. The worst part about you lot is how you guys insist on meddling in our work. Thanks to your big noses, we keep failing at our jobs. Do you have any idea how aggravating that is? I, for one, am sick and tired of your shenanigans. And as for you guys... I can't believe y'all got bested by a couple of apprentice witches. We worked so hard to make people think mages are useless, and now you've gone and made people start trusting them again. Or maybe y'all don't care about wasting our hard work. You don't get to call yourselves a part of the Curio Company! You'd best get your heads in the game! Right! <laughs> You do realize we could hear everything that the two of you witches were talking about earlier, don't ya? Stupid brats! Is getting in our way just playtime for you people or what? Wait, that's what you call playtime? But embarrassing you has been so boring. <laughs> Kate, that's it! <laughs> Stop standing around and dispose of them already! Right. <laughs> about killing you, okay? So how's about we work out a deal? <laughs> Let's take a quick breather before we contact our teacher. Sounds good to me. You never mentioned it, but what exactly made you want to study magic in the first place? <laughs> oh, that story? It's not all that interesting. I sort of learned magic on my own. Hey! No! Yeah, it was petty, but it kept me alive. Then one day, the person I tried to steal from was Teach. Catching me was easy for her. It's weird, but up until that point, mm -hmm. I didn't even know witches existed. So you've never even heard of them? Nope. Because no one told me. But Teach explained everything. She told me how strong witches are, and how much people respected them. I thought about it, 
And living as a witch seemed preferable to living life like a stray cat. That's why I asked her to make me her apprentice. See? I told you it wasn't that interesting. Well, it's your turn. Unfortunately, I think my reason may be even less interesting than yours. The country that I come from doesn't have any witches. So if I become a real witch, then I will be the only one in the entire country. Which means that I would always have a way to make a good living. There you go. <laughs> so basically, you're only becoming a witch for your own self-interest. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> Great. That's the same reason as me. Indeed. Huh. After that, Sheila and I finished rounding up the members of the Curio Company. Damn it! I will get you brats back for this! Just you wait and see! Won't they just try something else once they get out of prison? Probably. But what really matters is that the two of you did an excellent job. Sheila and I continued to travel together with our teacher. And when we returned to her home country... Finally! We're witches! Thank you very much, ma'am. They look good on you two. Congratulations. You're both officially witches. Thanks, Thank you. Teach. One more thing. As for your witch titles... <sighs> seeing as Fran's hair is black, I'll dub her the Stardust Witch. And because Sheila's hair is so bright, I give her the title of the Night Witch. Shouldn't it be switched, since my hair is dark like nighttime? Yeah, and if my hair's shiny, shouldn't I be the Stardust Witch? They're so different, Night and Stardust. But they complement each other well, don't they? Uh, sorry, but I'm not following. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey! Hold on a second, I think I understand your attempt at a metaphor, Teach. It's like even if two people are completely different, they can still share a connection or whatever, right? <laughs> it looks like you got the right answer. One thing, though, why choose our titles based on our hair color? Mage's lives in danger. Curio Company back after 20 years. What's going on? Is this the same Curio Company that was in the Adventures of Nikkei? Either they've been released from custody, or maybe there's a copycat group. I don't know if you've heard the latest, it's mm -hmm. just awful. Oh yes, it sounds like the group that called themselves the Curio Company is back. I thought we got rid of them for good a long time ago. I wonder if my husband will be okay. If they're around again, all the mages in town are in danger. This is terrifying. Doesn't seem like a good time to be a witch in this country. So how to avoid those annoying rogues? <laughs> Perfect. No one will recognize me as a mage in a cute outfit like this one. I'm just your average, everyday beautiful woman. Yeah, the tour is going sightseeing. girl on the broom. I'm sorry, I heard the word cute, so I assume you're talking to me. Yes, indeed I am, my dear. You see, some troublemakers are on the loose in this town. They're especially drawn to people wearing clothes like the ones you have on. Why, you could be attacked at any moment if you're not careful. Are you sure about that? This doesn't seem like a very dangerous town to me. It's extremely dangerous, I'm afraid. Wow, I had no idea things were that bad. It must make living here pretty awful, huh? As an outsider, you wouldn't know, but this town has a history with mages. There have been attacks in the past. Yes. Back in those days, any poor sucker who could use magic was shaking in their boots. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Huh? Uh, oh, don't find him. He was just praying. <laughs> anyway, in order to stay safe and survive the cruelties of this town, might I suggest a helpful item from Curio? I mean, the Antique Company is a wonderful self-defense set. <laughs> I could tell you're up to something with that spiel. Unfortunately, I turned down all hard cells, so... Bye. No, wait! Give me a minute! I'm so 
so sorry, ma'am. I really did try to get that box, I swear. You're as useless as ever, I see. It's my fault for continuing to trust you. Time for a new plan. We don't actually have to steal that box, we just have to get it open somehow. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Pretty sure the association's over here. Is this it? Is this how I'm going to die? Shut up! You can't let them hear you. Uh, huh? Uh. Mina? How have you been? Uh... Wait, what are you doing here? I'm doing undercover work for the association. There's a lot of deranged people in this town causing trouble. I've been trying to infiltrate them. Oh, what kind of trouble? Why don't you tell me why you're here first? Oh yeah, I'm on a job too! Association! Impressed, aren't ya? <sighs> What's the association got you doing? Just delivering this. What is it? I don't know. I haven't heard anything from the higher-ups about this, though. Come on, let's go. You might as well stay with me while you're here. Um, I still got a job to do, remember? But don't worry about me. I'll just find it in after I drop this off. <sighs> Seriously? You know, a little bit of happiness escapes every time you sigh. <sighs> just made this morning. Buy one, get one. Open that box up without thinking twice, and then the real fun will start. <laughs> Listen to me, sis. This is really important. Who's that? telling you about are planning to attack all the stores in town. They're going to hit jewelry shops, weapon sellers, cloth merchants. No business here will be safe. Is this a dream? Are you even listening to me? Um, I'm sorry, but I don't know who you are. What's your name? Me? Mm, you're not funny. Stop joking around. I wasn't trying to make a joke. And what's going on with my voice? It sounds... <clears throat> I was so surprised to see her again that I totally forgot to breathe. <sighs> Is that you, Miss Elena? Hey, um, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait. 
You don't seem like you're feeling very well. Any fever? Let me feel. Have you experienced any nausea? <gasps> huh? Get your hands off me! <laughs> Was that really necessary? <laughs> huh? Um, what's the matter? Oh my, hello. <laughs> so adorable. I love you. You see, the thing is, I never thought about it quite like this, but I've loved you my whole life. I know that sounds strange. I can't explain it, but I miss you and think about you all the time. Oh, hold on. Even though you're older than me, you've always followed me around and relied on me just like a lost little puppy. You make a pitiful big sister. You're so cute, though. Sometimes I just can't stand it. Whenever I look at you, I just want to pinch your cheeks and squish your cute little face. It's true. And also, I don't think I need anybody else in my life other than you. I apologize. I hate that I've always been so cold to you despite that. I really do love you with my whole heart and soul. I'm sorry that I was never honest about my feelings. I swear I could just eat you right up. I love you and I don't know how to make it stop. These feelings are so overwhelming. I've never felt love like this before. I beg you, please love me back. You do, right? And up you go. My goodness. I wonder what that was about. But I'm in love with your little brother, not you! I'm sorry! I don't feel the same way! Everyone in town has gone completely crazy. And I have a sneaking suspicion that it has something to do with that strange little box I opened. That voice, it sounds... You're so adorable. It doesn't matter the angle. You get cuter by the second. No, that can't be possible. It's me. It is. There's no question that's me. <laughs> is that you, Saya? Huh? Hey, you're me. for them. I've got that part figured out. <laughs> now, if we could return to the little matter of us switching bodies. Wait, what do you mean you figured out what's going on with the crazy townspeople? Why don't we box that up and set it aside for now? Speaking of boxes, I'm supposed to have one with me. Do you know what happened to it? Whatever's inside it is so dangerous, the box is never, ever, ever supposed to be opened. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you opened it, that would be bad. Um, just a little. Are you serious? What in the world were you thinking? I'm gonna be in so much trouble. You idiot! What the heck is the matter with you, huh? Did my little sister try to stop you? Your little sister? Oh, uh, yeah, the girl who was with you, the super pretty one with the long black hair. Ah. <sighs> Oh, that girl. Why are you looking at me like that? Let's just say that you guys have, you know, a lot in common. Oh, wow, what would make you think that? We're totally different, I promise. <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you'd wipe that weird expression off of my face. What are you talking about? <gasps> Love! <laughs> Can you please get away from the window? Uh, no way! I want to be this close to you all the time, Miss Elena! I understand why you'd feel that way, but our first priority should be finding a way to get the city back to normal. Wait, actually, if it has to be somebody's priority, then it should be mine. After all, I'm the dummy who opened the stupid box. Well, 
if that's the case, since I'm still technically you at the moment, that means I should probably help out too, am I right? Seriously, I'm going to need you to stop rubbing the window. So what kind of strange magic was inside that box anyway? <laughs> I say it's probably more of a curse. It has the elements of a strong love potion. Somebody must have made a switch body so that you would open it, right? <laughs> that seems like a pretty sloppy plan to me. Yeah, true. What could they possibly have hoped to accomplish? <laughs> it's exactly like the box plans. A witch came here to deliver a small box that was confiscated in the past, thinking it was a real job for the United Magic Association. What an idiot! Sure, I couldn't steal the box from the witch, but then we switched the witch's body with that simpleton of a girl, and she did all the hard work for us. <gasps> Thanks to her stupidity, everything's in chaos! Go forth and steal! Before the smoke's effects wear off! The Cheerio Company's back! And we've got years of stealing to make up for! Hey, when I was talking to your little sister earlier, she mentioned something about a group that was planning an attack on the stores here. Oh, you think that's them? He did say the Curio Company has been revived. The Curio Wachima, who's it now? It's a chapter from the book, The Adventures of Mike. Yeah, I never read that one, sorry. Of course not. Anyway, it's still a really sloppy plan, but at least we know what's going on. Uh, we're really sorry if we got carried away. No worries, I'm not even that upset, honestly. But in exchange for not roasting you, you can tell me where your leader is. <laughs> After a totally harmless conversation, the man told us what he knew of the Curio Company's leader and her exact location. I just don't understand how you got the better of us. It was the perfect scheme. No, your plan was sloppy and reckless at best. That's weird, because earlier you seemed pretty upset that they tricked you, remember? You misheard me. Anyway, I can't believe I got the chance to capture the same exact Curio Company leader that was in The Adventures of Nikkei. Okay, listen up. What do we have to do in order to fix all of this body-switching nonsense? What do you mean by we? I'm totally fine if we don't switch back like ever. And the sooner you can make it happen, the better! I can't actually do it right away. <laughs> we should go back to normal in about a day or so! And you're absolutely positive about that? <laughs> However! Now, now what? what? Don't go celebrating your win just yet! The Curio Company is huge! There's still a lot of guys out there that you haven't caught, so... <sighs> well, you're both wasting your precious time on me. The chaos is multiplying, and my guys are stealing everything. <laughs> Too bad for you. I guess that makes you guys the losers. So what now? We'll have to find and stop them. Let's split up. No, nope. it's already handled. <gasps> Miss Fran? Teach, is that you? Sheila? She's your teacher? I suppose it's been a while. I haven't seen those bangs since the last time. What? You're that bratty apprentice who caught me! Apprentice? My, your fangs are much smaller now. And chewing rocks? Wait, what? Don't worry about the Curio Company guys wreaking havoc on the town anymore. We took care of them all on our way in. Too bad, so sad. It looks like you lost again. Again? Now then, why don't you do us a favor and tell us how to return the townsfolk to normal? <laughs> but I don't wanna. <laughs> uh, what happened? And with that, everything should be back to normal. Wow, who knew it'd be that simple? And you still haven't explained what happened to her? Mm -hmm. I told you those witches are no good. About that box. It's only a suspicion, but could it possibly be from an island far beyond the horizon? That's correct. Case in point, Miss Elena knows everything about everything. It makes sense, but I wonder... 
was the item that switched me and Saya also from that island. When you see a person you like even a little bit, you can't act normal around them anymore. But when you see someone you really like or love, you become a desperate fool. That's the curse that smoke carries. Oh, I get it. Hmm. Whatever, who cares? Ahem. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Miss Elena? Yes, what is it? I've heard about you a lot from Saya. She told me about how you helped prepare her for the exam after I left and that you later found each other again in another country. <clears throat> What's worse is she sounded so happy when she talked about it. Uh, so, Mina, not to change the subject, but why did you leave Saya in the Land of Mages? She was pretty depressed, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, that one's on me. It's because I wanted to start her training as a witch right away. I basically ordered her to return to her homeland, so that's why. Wait, when you say training... It means I was actually Mina's teacher, too. Surely you guys knew that. No, no we, we didn't. didn't. Saya has a bit of a tendency to depend on people, right? So I decided to separate these two. You can't grow if you're always around the same people. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I just assumed Mina was tired of Saya and went back home because she was so annoyed. Well, quite the opposite, actually. Mina wouldn't let me hear the end of it. She shouted things like, Why'd you make me leave my sister? And I'll never forgive you for this. I think she even threatened to curse me. Oh, wow, that's crazy. <sighs> Are you surprised? Based on what happened yesterday, it doesn't really seem that unexpected at all. Uh, oh, scandalous. It makes you wonder which one of these two is the clingy one, huh? Right. Let's talk about something else. How's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to go. You can't make me a big meanie. I'm not leaving. I want to stay here forever and go sightseeing with Miss Elena every day. Let Stop Please acting like go. such a brat! You're you know we have work anymore. waiting for us! Who cares? I'm gonna quit! I don't need this dumb, boring old job anymore! How are you gonna eat? I'll just marry Miss Elena and she'll feed me! Uh, no, thank you. I'll pass. You heard the lady. Come on. Let's get going. <sighs> if looks could kill, her glare's a curse all by itself. See you soon, friend. Yep. In another year. It would appear that you're very loved. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. So, Elena? Yes, Miss Fran? I'm sure you must have realized it by now. Realized what? You've figured out who my teacher was, haven't you? Your teacher? I don't think so. You know, when it comes to the important things, you haven't changed. Like how you can't be honest with yourself. For the record, I don't have any problems with who I am. That's admirable, but you will have to address it sooner or later. Maybe I will, but I'm not ready to stop traveling yet. There are a lot of countries I still want to visit. I'll live my life doing the things I want at my own leisure. <laughs> I'm just afraid that if I were to truly put it all together, then maybe my days of traveling freely would never be the same again. Listen, no matter who has influenced you in your choices in this life, or whether you know that person, you will always be Elena the Ashen Witch. Do you really think so? I'm certain. Did you know? My teacher always seemed like she calculated everything, but the truth is she was a pretty carefree individual. Seriously? Just like you're a carefree individual. I don't understand. I guess what I'm saying is, there's no reason for you to worry about every little thing in this life. That said, I do hope that one day you'll find the time to go back to your home for a visit. Yes. One day. Don't forget, okay? And remember, you're always in our thoughts and hearts, Elena. We'll always love you. Well, in that case, I guess I should say... that I love you too, Miss Fran. Everyone in my life. <sighs> There are five volumes in the adventures of Nikkei, and while I've always loved them, I also imagined that my story would be a lot longer than that. That's why. In the country where Miss Fran and Sheila were able to finally be honest with each other, 
I discovered something about myself, too. I want to keep going, to keep being the Ashen Witch, an ordinary traveler enjoying my journey. This is where my story begins. The story of a witch and a traveler. I am both, and my journey is best described as a series of introductions and farewells. It's also a series of choices. I have made so many that couldn't be reversed. And yet, they've made me who I am today. The country that makes your wishes come true Interesting. Hmm. I wish to be super rich. I wish to be super rich. I wish to be super rich. Super rich. Wait a minute, is that Mira Rose's castle? Stop! Please don't move. I need to know which version of me you are. A good me, or an evil me? An evil me? What are you talking about? I didn't realize there were other versions of myself. Oh, I like your glasses. Were they expensive? Hmm. So who are you and why do you look- I'm Elena, the Ashen Witch. How is that possible? I'm Elena, the Ashen Witch. Yes, of course you are. I don't get it. I made a wish upon entering this place, but it had nothing to do with creating another me. Well, we didn't want it either. Who's we? There are more of us? Exactly how many me's are we talking about? I honestly don't know how many there are in total. But there are 15 of us here now. What? Are you serious? No! May I have your attention? We have one more me. I'd like you to meet the 16th Elena. Oh, hello. Oh, -ho! I see you've decided to cosplay me like everyone else. I'm not sure I approve of doing it without permission, though. So, I'll just have to charge you a tiny fee. That'll be ten billion in gold! Plus, she gets excited about money. So, instead of the Ash Witch, we call her the Cash Witch. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Hello, Cash Witch. Bye -bye, nice to meet ya! <laughs> and to my right, we have the dumb me. Me number 16, it's so nice to meet you. Knock, knock, who's there? Nobody! <laughs> <laughs> Seems more like a combination of dumb and clumsy. This is the me who loves all the girls. I can't believe it! How did I get so lucky? Wow, 16 of me? Beautiful young ladies as far as the eye can see! <laughs> it's not so much that she likes girls, more that she loves herself. And then we have this one who has a real preoccupation with her, um, upper half. Oh, honestly, it's strange how so many of you claim to be another me. 
When compared to mine, your little chests look rather deflated and pathetic. What's wrong with you guys? Got something against drinking milk or what? Oh. <laughs> no, my poor chest. Come back to me. D for effort. That one is the moody me. Don't away. Hey, what are you looking at, you newbie jerk? You wanna fight me? Come on, let's go! <laughs> right next to her is the greedy me. If I took all the money from every one of the me's here, I'd be super rich! <laughs> so far, she's the most relatable. <laughs> that one is the cringy me. <laughs> There's a black dragon trapped in my heart and he's trying to attack you! I suggest you all stay away from me! Get out now! We call this one the love-struck maiden me. I love you so, sweet Saya. Please be mine! It had to be Saya. This one's a bit disturbing. It's me trying to hide from the darkness deep down in my heart. Just kill me now. What's wrong with the poor girl? This is me with darkness deep down in my heart. 2.0. This sucks. The world is scary. <laughs> Must make being a traveler difficult. And that's me with darkness deep down in my heart. 3.0. I can't take it. I wish all the me's in here would just die already. A little unnerving how many dark sides I have. I like to refer to that one in the boots as foreign me. The Hara Show! Yes, quite a show! This is the gelatinous me. <laughs> She's not even human. This is the me that turned into a ghoul. How'd that happen? I, of course, am the intellectual me. You do think highly of yourself, don't you? Why, yes, I do! Oh, we've got to call you something, too. You know, something a little more specific than number 16. Ladies, any ideas? Do you see any traits that stick out to you that would help bestow a name? Nope! She's a zero like no personality! She's so 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 I see, I see. You all have interesting points. That was very helpful. In what way could that have been at all helpful? It was, trust oh. me. Based on all this information, I would like to call you protagonist me. Mm. What do you think? I have no idea which incoherent train of thought led you to that completely incomprehensible name. It was the one about you having no real personality. I did my best to spin your weakness into strength. Mm. I'm not especially keen on you saying I have no personality. You are just not looking at it in the right light. No personality means you're like a blank slate! You can become anything you want, like Gwei! Okay... Well, can anyone explain why we're all holed up in this place? Because we're safe here. There's an evil me in this country mixed in with the rest of us. She's known to be extremely violent, attacking whenever she meets another me. The danger is quite real. Huh. She's so violent, in fact, that we decided to call her Violent Me. You gave that a lot of thought. So basically, we're stuck in this place because of her. We're hiding from the so-called Violent Me. But violent or not, she's still just another version of me. So even if you did fight, the very worst that could happen is you come out of it with a draw, right? No, protagonist me, think about it. If the opponent is also me, that means I'd be battling myself. So no matter how it turns out, I would end up injured, whether I win or lose. Can you imagine what would happen if we did manage to kill her? How would it affect all of us? <sighs> I can't answer that. And neither can we. Since we don't know what to do, huh? we should do Except maybe sit around and talk about what we won't do! Am I right? Yeah! Please ignore that one. I'd like to know what you think we should do. I'm afraid I don't have any suggestions to offer either. You can't do that to us. You're the protagonist me, remember? This is your moment as the protagonist to step forward and take charge. Along those same lines, my role is the advisor to the protagonist. I see now. You wanted everyone to call me the protagonist me so that you could use me to solve the problem for you. I'm such a little scammer. As expected. <laughs> well, all right. If that's how you feel. Hmm? Will all the me's other than me please go out and search the town for clues of violent me's whereabouts? I'll be waiting right here. I look forward to a detailed report when you return. You tell her. I really don't understand why you're attacking me when you're the ones who put me up on this pedestal by proclaiming me as the protagonist. I don't mean to be selfish. <laughs> uh, 
No! How could we let Gulmi die? Disgusting. At least it was an instant death. Jelmy has been crushed and appears to be in a gelatinous state. <sighs> They're alive. Damn it. I'm so glad everyone's okay. It's about time, and you're all together in one big room. How considerate. That must be her. I mean me. Yes, that is violent me. Hope I've enjoyed it here, because this is the end for every last one of me. <laughs> I take it that the me perched so comfortably on the throne over there is the leader of this little band of me's. I don't know about all that, as I've only just arrived. But either way, I'm called protagonist me. In that case, I hope you'll forgive my rudeness. In deference to the protagonist. You'll die first! <laughs> Now hang on. Obviously, I don't know what happened to upset you so terribly that you'd want to attack me. But are you truly confident that you can defeat 16 of us? Oh, I'm afraid Jelmy and Gulmi are out of commission, so we're actually down to 14. But are you truly confident that you can defeat 14 of us? Without a second thought, I'm not weak from the luxury of a carefree existence like you all seem to have. So you think we're weak? You do realize we're all the same person here. Maybe it's time you look in the mirror. I knew it, you'll just die. Is it just me or do I look mad? I want to go home now. Please don't come any closer. <laughs> So it was a trap, and now I feel as though we're awaiting our execution. I've dreamed of returning to the ground. It's nice and cool and calming. She ran? I may have erred! Don't you dare touch my money! Get over here and face me, you bastard! Is the reason you're not fighting because you're scared? It was more important to observe you. To what end? I was trying to decide if defeating you in combat was worth my time. My somebody's impertinent. Yes, much like you, in fact. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask why your hair is still so short. I can't tell if you're being stupid or willfully ignorant. You know why my hair was cut off. I do. My hair was stolen from me when I visited there as well. I didn't have the energy to put my hair back to normal after everything I'd been through. I couldn't save a single person in that stupid country. I was completely useless to them. I want you to tell me something, Elena. Have you ever witnessed the instant love turns to hate with your own eyes? Have you ever had to sit by and watch someone turn on a person they once loved with murderous intent? I can't say that I have. And what happened next? The Ripper, I assume. I'm sorry you didn't have an opportunity to get your hair back. It sounds like your journey has been pretty different from the rest of ours. You don't say. Oh yes, completely different. No question. It's as I thought. You must understand now that we're hardly the same person. What's your point? So you witnessed the instant love turns into hate and then what? You fell into deep despair, then you didn't even have the energy to get your hair back in order. Is that really all it took to break you? <laughs> I certainly don't remember wishing for anything that should have put me right in the middle of a mess like this. What I felt wasn't despair. It's pure seething anger and hatred. Oh? At what if I may ask? I think that should be obvious. I'm angry with myself. And all the other versions of me, traveling about without a care in the world while I was made to suffer. 
I experienced one cruel reality and froze. I don't know how to find my way back from being so worthless. So she's taking her anger out on the rest of us. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> But unfortunately, and predictably, we were too evenly matched. And in the end, even after we'd both exhausted all of our magic, we had settled nothing at all. What was I even thinking? And what's the point of this cursed country anyway? I have an idea. So if you really can't figure it out, I'm happy to tell you what I was kind of longing to find. As it turns out, I needed these other me's to help me understand myself a little better. Because somewhere in my heart, I was dying to see all the other possibilities. What's that supposed to mean? Journeys are a series of meetings and farewells. By the same token, they're also a series of choices. So think about this. If I had made any of those choices differently, I may have become a different person entirely. That's why I'm here. I wanted to meet all the other possible versions of us. That's great, but you do realize that still doesn't explain what I'm doing here. Sure it does, silly. We're the same person, so I can guess how you feel. And I think you yearn for the other us's like I did. But specifically, for a version of yourself that wasn't caught up in the middle of the sorrow at the clock village of Bristol. You can't change what happened to you, but I think you came here to remind yourself of what you were like before all that pain. You see, you didn't find us because you were destined to hurt us. You needed help healing yourself. Well, that's pretty self-centered. Did you say it's self-centered? the adventures of Nike, although with everything we've already been through our story will become something even greater yes i think that's brilliant a proposal befitting of protagonist me i always wanted to be a book oh yeah i'm totally in chronicling our dark past count me in the hotter show <gasps> i'm yelling. in that case i suppose we should start brainstorming titles the adventures of elena duh just like Nike, huh i'm like let's go 
Hmm. What about blooming Lily Elena? Dying up a cup of Elena. How to keep losers off your back. Get rich or die trying. The Elena story. Mm -hmm. The Mountain Diary of Elena. Crying out Saya in the center of the world. Mm -hmm. Elena's life in hell. Elena climbs the stairway to heaven. Elena's happiest at home. Had a show! <laughs> All right. Enough joking. Can all the Mies take this seriously? It took until the wee hours of the night. But after some intense discussion, we finally settled on a title. Where do you plan on going now that you aren't out for revenge? I think the first order of business will be to get all my hair back. I had to guess it's probably still on that creepy doll. That's a good plan. I know, right? Besides, the Ripper has already been caught, so all I have to do is find the doll and I should be good. And hey, thank you, Elena. You're very welcome, Elena. Don't mention it. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. and I would have a lot to talk about. 